incroyable sur la patinoire après la première vague de compétition. Et sinon, il y aura le concours de danse dans l'aréna Maurice Richard. J'ai pour vous des bonbons parce qu'on va fêter l'Halloween en avance ici lors de cette dernière journée de deuxième Coupe du Monde ISU courte piste. Speed Skating Canada sur Instagram. Partagez vos moments, partagez votre passion pour le patinage de vitesse. Et puis sinon, quand il y a de la musique, si vous vous retrouvez sur l'écran géant, le Jumbotron, ici, là, ça part là, là. Si vous vous retrouvez dans le Jumbotron, obligation de danser et j'irai vous voir pour vous récompenser. Je veux qu'on passe un bon moment, je veux qu'on donne l'énergie à nos athlètes. Profitez-en pour triper aujourd'hui. Puis moi, ben, j'aurai des jeux pour vous toute la journée. Je serai finalement à la recherche des spectateurs du jour. Ceux qui participent, ceux qui encouragent, ceux qui se donnent. J'irai vous voir avec une surprise spéciale aujourd'hui. Passez une excellente journée. On met de l'ambiance dans l'arène à Maurice Richard. Je vous reviens. DJ, à toi. Avec grand plaisir, nous vous accueillons dans notre métropole pour cette Coupe du Monde du patinage de vitesse porte piste Pendant cette compétition, nous allons célébrer les meilleurs talents de ce sport qui a procuré au Canada le plus de médailles olympiques. La normalité de notre ville est une grande richesse. Les sports d'hiver, comme le patinage de vitesse, font partie de notre identité. Merci de contribuer à leur service. Je suis convaincue que de nombreux Montréalais et Montréalais vont suivre vos exploits pendant la compétition. Par votre talent, votre audace et votre lumière, vous êtes une source d'inspiration. Je vous souhaite à toutes et à tous d'excellentes compétitions et une belle Coupe du Monde. Bonjour aux athlètes, aux personnels de soutien, aux entraîneurs. Un gros merci au comité organisateur et aux bénévoles de rendre cet événement possible. Et aux spectateurs, ben, pour ceux qui découvrent le sport, vous allez voir ces plus beaux sports au monde. Puis pour les autres, ben, je vous souhaite une compétition rêvée. Alors, à la prochaine. Pour ceux qui viennent de se joindre à nous, prenez place. Nous allons dans quelques instants vous présenter les patineurs et patineuses qui vont représenter le Canada dans les compétitions de l'après-midi et qui nous ont fait honneur hier avec plusieurs médailles lors des épreuves individuelles, dont trois médailles d'ordre, deux équipes de relais qui sont qualifiées pour la grande finale plus tard cet après-midi. La table est mise pour un spectacle haut en couleur à la Maurice Richard. Thank you. 
The fortnight to begin the ISU Short Track World Cup se season closes down today with the last session of World Cup Two in Montreal. Well, quite a Saturday it was on the home ice for Team Canada. Three individual goals within the women's and men's programs. And today the stars are back and we will see uh, how the afternoon session closes down. It's been a great couple of weeks here in Montreal. The World Cup season will take pause for a couple of weeks. They will return for the uh, third World Cup session in Beijing between December 8th and December 10th. The four continents will be next week also in Canada. Many of these teams will make the short trip to Laval for next weekend. But well, here's a look at the schedule of events for the rest of the day. We'll see the quarterfinals of the women's and men's thousands. That's in the starting block right now. The 1500 meter second running. We'll have the semifinals coming up in about 45 minutes. And then we'll have the BNA finals of those two events and then the finals of the women's and men's relays. Glad to have you with us. Patrick Keen is back with you. I know it's been an exhausting and draining couple of weeks for the athletes. Same for this said broadcaster. Virus kicking around the household. So bear with me and my uh, throat fatigue as we try to push through these last few hours of World Cup 2. Really a banner day for the Canadians yesterday. William D'Angelo picked up his first individual gold medal that came in the first running of the 1500. Jordan Pierre Gillet indicated he got a lot of inspiration from Dan Geno's gold as he claimed the 500 within a half hour later. And Ricky Doak, by virtue of a penalty, claimed the 500 on the women's side as Alexander Velzebor was penalized, elevating Ricky Doak a day after her birthday for her first individual gold medal. That kind of weekend so far for Canada. And again, this is the second straight week of World Cup action here in Montreal. And the uh, Korean side had a very good opening week as well. You look through the, the medal counts of the opening week, Korea walked away with nine medals, including four gold in the first World Cup. And they'll have a lot of good, good opportunities coming up today. Wang Dae Hoon claimed silver. Kim Gon Woo the bronze in the 1500 yesterday. Kim Gilly continues her dominant form. She claimed the 1500 will see her again later on today in the quarterfinals. The mixed relay went to the Chinese in the final event we saw last night. And a very good crowd still filing into the Maurice Richard Arena. So we'll open up this afternoon final day session with the quarterfinals. Beginning on the women's 1,000 meter at the repechage quarters and semis earlier this morning. And now back onto the ice for what will be the first of four heats in the women's 1,000. A nice crowd still gathering in. The diehard fans, a lot of families and friends of these Canadian athletes. They've been a, a huge boon for the success we saw yesterday from Team Canada. And again, the World Cup will move to Beijing December 8th through the 10th, then to Seoul the following weekend. And then Europe will get the final two World Cup events in Dresden early February, Gdansk in the middle of February. But as I mentioned, the four continents will be next week in Canada. So Team Canada, the United States, and many of these other uh, squads will stay here in Canada. And it's a, an elongated road trip going on three weeks now. European Championships will come up in the second full week of January. The World Junior Championships in Poland in late February. And then the Short Track National World Championships will be in Rotterdam in the middle of March. So the season is just getting underway. But a, a hallmark first couple of weeks here in Canada closing down today. All right, so let's get to the ice. First of four heats, nine laps in this women's quarterfinal thousand. There's a look at Lee Soyun, silver in the 1,000 last week on this ice that came in the first running. She's mainly been kind of a relay piece for the Korean side, trying to get onto that individual podium for the first time. There's Dene Blay, who picked up bronze in the 1,500 yesterday, parts of that outstanding uh, contingent and performance by Team Canada, Montreal native. Yannick Khan 
the Olympian from Kazakhstan. So four heats in this quarterfinal, 22 skaters remain. They'll take the top two plus a max of two of the fastest third place times on to the semis. And the semis will be in the next hour and a half, so not a lot of turnaround time. Well, there were five skaters listed on the original start sheets, and Wang Yi, the 18-year-old from China, evidently has been scratched, so we have four now in this opening quarterfinal. And that's Sofia Kanya leading the way for Hungary, the 28-year-old three-time Olympian. Lee of Korea right now second, Blay third, and Yana Khan fourth. This is kind of that hybrid distance sprint so you'll see a little quicker pace than we see in the 1500, slower than we see in the five. The moves will come a little bit sooner in the race. And there is the first move of this one. Lee Soyun takes the lead, representing Korea. Donna Blade stays right on her hip. Donna Khan, tight little move on the inside of the third. Again, the first and second will automatically qualify to the semifinals coming up in less than two hours. There's Blade bursting to the inside of Lee. And Blay of Canada in front. Have to imagine her success from yesterday it gives her so much more confidence and belief coming into today's final session. Earning her first individual podium and inside two laps to go in the lead, trying to get to the semifinals. There's the belt. It's Blay and Lee, first and second. Yana Khan a close third. And Khan will not have the opportunity to gain that pass. He'll cross the line. Khan will at 134.56. So Dene Blay and Lee Soyun finish first and second. And we will watch that time for Yannick Khan and see if it holds up. So that's a pretty good start for Team Canada, winning its first quarter final heats, thanks to Dene Blay. See Claudia Gagnon coming up in the next heat for Canada. Ricky Doak, who claimed gold in the 500 yesterday. She will be in the fourth and final heat. I mean, team momentum is a real thing regardless of sport, even when you think a sport is mostly individualized. And the entire team of uh, Canadian skaters really felt just the energy and the uplifting of the success of all their skaters yesterday. Now to heat number two, there's a look at the Tacoma Washington native of Team USA, Corey Stoddard. Fifth in his classification last year. Bronze in the 1,000 in Almaty last year. And she picked up bronze to 1,500 last week. Her second career individual World Cup podium. So five across the line, Claudia Gagnon and Helman 19. Sarah Luca Boxai of Hungary, Michelle Belzebor and that Lavender Helmet number 16. And Maja Simodi also of Hungary. So two Hungarians in this race as we open things up, nine laps. And there goes Belzebor, world junior bronze medalist last year in the 500. And she sets the early pace. Gagnon of Canada third. Stoddard of the U.S. in fourth. Sabodi in pretty good position right now in second for Hungary. No real opportunity yet for Gagnon or for Stoddard for that matter to get through. Stoddard actually lost his spot on that far corner. Still Belzebor. Stoddard goes wide from the back and does not pass anyone. Belzebor holds on to it. We're inside three laps. Gagnon to second. And looking for the inside pass on this corner and will get past Belzebor. Gagnon in the lead. Stoddard still fifth. And it's Belzebor and Gagnon. 
So one last corner for Gagnon. and Belzebor trying to fend off both Hungarian skaters and will cross the line second. So Canada has claimed the opening two quarterfinals. Blay and now Gagnon. And didn't see what happened at the back of the pack, but Corey Stoddard of the U.S. crashed out with about two and a half laps to go. We'll see if the replay here gives us any evidence. Stoddard really was not a factor in this race anyway for the U.S. Bill Zibor and Gagnon, a pretty game effort by Simone, but just couldn't maintain that brief second position. A stumble there by Gagnon. I mean, she almost went down. Regained her balance and composure and wound up winning the race. And there you see in the back end, kind of halfway through that corner, Stoddard spilled out into the wall. It's a terrific recovery by Gagnon. And she was almost down to her right knee coming out of that one corner. Skill, timing, a little bit of luck in this sport never hurts. And the official results, there's the Simone's time of 131.02. Again, the, a max of two third place finishers will move on. We've seen no advancements yet over the first couple of heats. There's the start list of the third quarterfinal, the women's thousand. And there's a look at Kamila Stormowska, Olympian from Poland, 23 years old. Got on an individual podium last year in Dordrecht in the 500 for bronze. There's Italy's Elisa Confortola. The current time qualifier through the first two quarters. Ready. So a field of six. Two of these six came out of the repechage earlier this morning. Wang Zhenran of China and advancing on a penalty was Malika Yermek from Kazakhstan. Right now Yermek in the back of the pack. Ami Harai of Japan, along with Stormowska, the top two. Park Jiyun of Korea, third. Wang of China right now, fourth. Top two out of this quarterfinal. We'll head to the semis. Stormowska taps the gas. And an outside pass on Harai. Stormowska the lead with four laps to go. And a little bit of clear ice now behind her. Park of Korea in the second. Wang of China, a little jostling there with her eye. And Wang into third. Star Moscow comes out of the corner. And now a challenge begins. Here comes Park. Swings past her on the outside. Lap and a half to go. It's Park. And now Star Moscow on the chase. Confortola getting involved in third inside position. Tries to make one more pass to qualify for the semis. It's Park, it's Stormowska, and that will be the finish. Confortola's 131.08, finishing third. So Park Gio, the 24-year-old, on to the semifinals. Joined by Camilla Stormowska of Poland. So here are the official results. Well, not quite yet. Video review is ongoing. And as I mentioned yesterday during the broadcast, there's a referee's liaison from the arena kind of walking us through in real time on 
what skaters and what the possibility of uh, penalties can be. They were looking at a potential penalty involving Wang Jinran of China, but that has been cleared. So Park and Stormoska do move through as we look at the start list of the final quarter. And we'll see Ricky Doak right there, helmet 15. I'm guessing she slept rather well last night. Picked up her first individual World Cup gold in the 500. The race ended, she finished second. She was actually kind of in third spot until the two uh, Dutch skaters, Poutsma and Alexandra Velzebor got involved. Poutsma got knocked off. Doak crossed the line second behind Velzebor, but she earned the penalty and Doak earned the gold as a result. She's in the inside position here. Field of six for this last quarterfinal. And by the way, that time of Colt Fertola, 131.057, is good enough right now to advance. She's on the bubble. Simone will get through. Kyle Watanabe opening things up for Japan. So we man, the 21-year-old who won bronze last week in the first running of the 1,000. She's representing Korea and shuffled back to third. And the crowd goes nuts as Doak grabs the lead. She's been knocking on the door. Made the A final at the World Championships last year. Finished fourth, just off the podium. But now brimming with extra confidence. Ariana and Seagal in the blue kit for Italy right now, fourth. Two and a half laps left. It is still Doak. And now So We Men on the inside finds a path and gets by her. So it's So We Men. Doak to second, still a qualifying position if she can finish it off. Seagal kind of tiptoes her way around Watanabe. There's the bell. So we men, Doak trying to fight off Seagal. She won't do it. Seagal gets the clean pass and will finish second. And Ricky Doak third. But that time will get Doak through 129.78. So that will knock Confortola off of the bubble. Again, they will take a review at a little bit of contact earlier in this race. No communication as of yet, as far as what they're exactly looking at on this video review. And they've determined it will be a no call, so that will be cleared up. There's that last significant pass by Seagal, getting past Doak, but Doak, by virtue of time, will advance on to the semifinals. Here's a look at So We Men. And you see the small cube next to the time of Ricky Doak. That is the final quarter final, so she's through. And here are the look at the semifinalists. Simone and Doak will move through via time, and the others are the automatic qualifiers. So now we'll move through to the men's 1,000 quarters. Again, they ran the repechage quarters and semis earlier this morning. And we'll see Liu Xiaoang, the Olympic champion in the 500 in Beijing in this opening quarter. Now representing China, we'll see a very busy day from Xiaoang. Looking ahead of the men's 5,000 relay later today. That'll be the final event. China, the reigning world champions. Here's Jens Van Schwaltz. Go to the start. Ready. Six in the field in this opening quarter. That includes Jang Sung Woo of Korea, who won his repechage semifinal to get into the quarters here. And Liam O'Brien 
Also coming through the repassage, advanced via penalty. He's in the green suits in the back. So it's Liu Xiaowang opening things up. His teammate Sun Long right alongside. And Sun Long in the red helmet at 102. As China goes 1-2 around the finish line. Six laps left. Felix Roussel of Canada, number 24 right there. Oh, a little push, and Xiaowang got knocked off stride. That will be reviewed as a potential penalty against Roussel. So right now, Liu Xiaowang is fourth. Brian Schwartz in third. Soon Long right now still in front. Brian Schwartz, tight quarters, does get around Roussel. He's in a second. They will take another look at another potential penalty. This is the opening quarter final, two laps left. Soon, here's Van Schwartz. Big move on that back straight, gets around him. And here's the bell. Van Schwartz in the lead. Soon, and now Xiao Ang making a move through some traffic. He's up in a second place. And Van Schwartz and Liu Xiao Ang. One, two. That was a tough race for Liu Xiao Ang. And Jens Van Trout claims it. But again, a couple of reviews. The first one will be against Rousset in the 24 helmet for Canada. As he made a lot of contact with Liu Xiaoang right here. And Xiaoang lucky that he didn't go splashing into the boards. And somehow recovered. In horse racing terms, they call that a, a very tough trip for Liu Xiaoang. I mean, knocked wide, knocked off balance, almost knocked off the ice, and still manages to show his quality in finishing second in a very turbulent race. And Jens Van Trout, that's one of the better performances we've seen from him in the first couple of weeks. That was an excellent route for Van Trout. And two incidents in that race are still under review. The one involving the Canadian Roussel. And the other element that they're looking at as we take a look at the replays here. And there's Alan Refsheim, the chief referee on the ice once again today. He's having a look. So there's the first one they're taking a look at right there with Roussel and Liu Xiaoang. And coming back in, yeah, both skates clipped. The right of Roussel, the left of Liu Xiaowang. And a little help from that right arm of Roussel also. We have not yet gotten word on the, the parties involved in a potential second penalty. And now I'm seeing it on my other screen that it involves Roussel as well against Van Schwartz. So both potential infractions going against Felix Roussel of Canada. So this will not impact Van Trout at all. He unofficially won the race. And the penalty would not be on Van Trout. It would go against Roussel in, in one or both cases. We've seen a couple of races this weekend where two penalties were been charged against the same skater, which results in a yellow card. Saw that yesterday with Hannitas Met to Belgium. Looks like it could be a shared responsibility in the Roussel Liu Xiaoang connection. That's unofficial, though. That's the word that I'm getting, though, as these skaters pop back on their tennis shoes. Semifinals in this event coming up in about an hour, hour and a half. So Van Trout leaves the little hole in area. It's so Roussel trying to figure out, probably replaying that race in his mind. So as you can see on the video review score bug in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, when they turn green, that means they've cleared. It's the fact that they're still yellow, they're still reviewing here. 
And we'll get the official word from Alan Grefshon. Next generation of skaters in attendance. Three more quarters to go here in the men's thousand. And still awaiting the official results here. And it appears the one that right now is still leading to some consternation is the one involving Roussel and Van Schwoot. Because the word that I'm getting is that shared responsibility was the determination on the uh, Lou Roussel. Little contact out of that early raised corner. All the more impressive to see Lou Xiaoang recover and still get up to finish second. I and mean, he easily could have gone down. And there will be a penalty assessed against Roussel of Canada. But again, that came in a contact with Van Trout, so that doesn't impact the final results here in this quarter. So Van Trout and Liu Xiaoang will move through. Here's a look at what they were looking at. This is the shared responsibility, so no penalty assessed here on Roussel on the right side of your screen. Both blades, the right of Roussel, the left of Xiaoang connect. Xiaoang got knocked back a couple of pegs, but did recover. Here is where the penalty took place. In the white helmet, that's Roussel. Kind of leaning in against Van Schwout. Not giving enough space for Jens Van Schwout, so the penalty is signed against Roussel. So Van Schwout and Liu Xiaoang on to the semifinals. Start list for quarterfinal number two. Van Trout's brother Mele, older brother by a year. In lane, pardon me, in position five, there's Roberts Kruisbergs. Kruisbergs number three in the world of this classification overall last year. And now a couple of skaters go down. That includes Van Trout's, along with Peter Yasipati. And we'll have a restart. Well, the advantage of a restart, at least as far as uh, Yazipati is concerned, as 117 goes down and undercuts Van Schwoot, is that by the time his momentum, momentum carried him across the ice into the, into the boards, he was right in front of his coaching staff. So he did not have far to go to get up and have his boot and his blade examined. What dangerous though. Blade's going right over the back of those helmets. So there is Melevan Schutz. Roots spent a lot of time in Ontario for about a decade of their life. They actually, were a hockey players on the way up. The game a little too physical for the comfort of their parents. They said, "Hey, how about how about short track?" And Jens and Melly still early in their careers, carving out their future for Team Netherlands. So they call the five back to the line. Shogo Miata inside position for Japan. Brendan Corey from Australia. And we'll try it again. Clean start through the opening quarter. Here we go, nine laps. Second quarter final of the men's thousand. 
Kruisberg's settling in, back in the pack. But a very strong portfolio for the Latvian. She won the 1,000 in Montreal last year, the first ever Latvian to claim a World Cup gold medal. Kruisberg's in the red and white, right now in fifth. And there goes Kruisberg, winding it up from the back. No passes yet, he'll try again down the back straight. Going four wide, can't get around Corey. And now well, Kruisberg's efforting hard again. Gets around Van Troots. Boy, he's been two, three wide this entire race. Determined to get in the lead is Kruisberg's. Inside three laps to go. Miata, Kruisberg still third. Yazipati hanging on to the two spot. Little contact between Kruisberg's and Corey. And how about Miata and Yazipati still 1-2 with one lap to go. Kruisberg's one last crack at passing Yazipati. And he will be very, very close. He will be very close. That's a thousand meter race. Kruisberg's probably skated about, I don't know, 1,100 meters. I mean, he was never in inside position. Started his move with about six laps, maybe five laps left. It was two, three wide, basically the rest of the race. And still might have finished second. She'll go Miata, unofficially the winner in the second quarter. I mean, watch Kruisbergs. This is right now with about five laps left where he tries to make his move. Goes three wide to try to get her on Corey. Stays wide again and never got anywhere close to the inside position the rest of the race. Had to skate through some contact. And only at the very end did he finally cut hard in and try to get that blade to the line before Yazipati did. And we'll see if he did. There will be one incident of a review here as Shogo Miata unofficially claims the second quarterfinal. Hugh Roberts, Kruisberg, you're, you're beat on a race like that. And that's how tight it was. So on the photo finish by 1-1,000th, Yazipati gets the AQ to the semifinals. Kruisberg's right now is on the clock. A max of two skaters will advance to the semis. Boy, I'd love to see kind of the advanced metrics in a race like that to see exactly how many meters more Kruisberg skated than everybody else in that race. Quarter number three. And there's a look at yesterday's champion in the 1500, William D'Angelo. He beat his childhood idol in the race, Wang Dae Hoon, the 1500. A guy's been watching dominate since he was a little kid. First gold medal of any kind for Dan Jadu. Dan Jadu right now at the back of the pack. Maxim Laou, number seven. Oh, spilled to the wall. Down he goes. And Van Hoeren of Belgium went down with him. So D'Angelo now in the lead, Lee to second. Felix Pigeon of Poland third. That will be reviewed as a potential penalty on Laun. Top two advance. Lee grabs the lead on the inside. Pigeon now drifts into second. And Angelo right now third. Packed tightly inside two laps. D'Angelo now looks to the inside, tries to get around Pigeon and does. Here's the bell. Lee Jong Min in the, in the lead. D'Angelo just trying to take a peek over the shoulder to see where Pigeon is. And it will be a Korea Canada one two finish very close. Looked like D'Angelo did get up. And they will take a look at the instant replay to make sure it was. D'Angelo's blade that crossed the line. And again, they'll take a maximum of two to the semifinals by virtue of third place times. And right now, on the bubble is Kruisberg's with that 125-602. It looks like Yang Sung Woo is likely to get through from the opening quarter, but we'll see. 
And they're looking at a potential penalty involving Laoun of Canada and Rito Van Horen of Belgium, number 82. And it looked like Laoun went down and then trailing was Van Horen. It kind of slid into the crash of Laoun. There's that stretch, that's close, but it looked like Angelo got up, and yeah, he will, by 19 thousandths of a second. And now it appears the word that we're getting as far as the review does not involve Van Horn, it involves Laun and his teammate, D'Angelo. And that is yet to be resolved, still having a look. Well, what a weekend this has already been for that man, William D'Angelo. How about maybe a potential another A final for D'Angelo here today? Looks like he's on his way at least to the semis here of the thousand. And we will see Team Canada in the 5,000 meter men's relay A final later today. That will be our final event. Well, here's the review, and it does look like, yeah, potentially they're looking at a Canada on Canada penalty, maybe. There's D'Angelo going wide, Laon to his left, and Laon got knocked down. Now, what I don't know by our official liaison is who they're looking at as the potential culprit here. Look from that angle, like it might be D'Angelo who could be on the chopping block here. As he was making the move from the outside, going three wide. Some contact with Laoon. He got knocked over. Yeah, there's D'Angelo trying to explain exactly what happened. And there will be a penalty against D'Angelo. So Maxime Laoon will be advanced. And D'Angelo, his outstanding weekend individually, comes to a, an abrupt close. So there's D'Angelo in the 33 helmet. Coming up on the left side of your screen, Maxime Laoun in the seven helmet in position. And the penalty charge against D'Angelo. That also took Van Horen out. So a disappointing finish for D'Angelo. Laoun will be advanced as we head now to the last quarter final in the men's thousand. So Lee and Pigeon move through. Laoun is advanced, which now means at the most, one of the fastest third place times will move to the semis. Good race here. Wang Dae-hoon inside position. The Olympic champion in the 1500 in Beijing. Liu Shaolin, the world champion in the 1000. Three-time Olympian. He's in the red and black kits in the middle of your screen. Quentin Faircock, world silver medalist in the 500. Davide Oschepper from Italy. Lucas Speckenhauser came on the repertoire and held with 37. That's the field. Faircock right now second. Liu Shaolin, silver in the 500 yesterday. He's in third position. Again, assuming no penalties and advancements here right now, the fastest third place time is Zhang sung of Korea, 124.908. So watch that as we wind things down. Four laps left. Still Wang Dae Hoon. Silver in the 15 yesterday. Liu Shaolin third. Fair Kulk in between. Coming up on two laps to go out of this corner. Wang Dae Hoon. And there goes Liu Shaolin. Up in a second. Fair Kulk shuffle to third. The two Italians fourth and fifth. Here's the bell. Wang Dae Hoon, Liu Shaolin, 1 2. Final quarter. And it will be, I believe, Liu Shaolin got his second. Maybe Speckenhauser out pipped him. Lucas Speckenhauser, a bolt of speed in that final half lap. From the back and made a rousing effort and photo finish. But right now, the timing mechanisms perhaps have Speckenhauser. Nosing out, Lou Shell in.
We've seen that happen a couple of times to the Blue Brothers the first couple of weeks of the World Cup season. Saw last week early in Friday's session. But here, this is a Sunday quarterfinal. Now, by time, we'll check to see where Shaolin crossed. If he doesn't finish second, again, the time to beat 124.908 for Yang Sung Woo out of the opening quarterfinal. To so get now what will be only one advancement by third place time. But credit, Speckenhauser. And he does get it. Speckenhauser by 5 100. It's tip of the blade. But that 125, that's not going to be good enough either for Lu Shaolin. So not only did Lu Shaolin get, get beat in that final half lap by Speckenhauser, Lu Shaolin is not going to the semifinals. So the official results from the last quarter final. And then we'll get the list of competitors moving on to the semis here momentarily. But they have not yet officially posted. Here they come. And there's no small cue by Lu Shaolin. So he will not move through. Wong and Speckenhauser. What a huge, huge final lap for Lucas Speckenhauser. Came out of the repechage to get to the quarters. And a lightning strike to knock Lu Shaolin out of the semis. So here are the guys advancing. Lu Shaoang, but his brother will not. Maxime Laoun on the advancement. Yang Sung Wu on the third place time. Everybody else, the automatic qualifiers. So those are the semifinalists later today in the men's thousand. So they will resurface the track, but not before a bunch of youngsters hop on the ice on this final day of the fortnight of two World Cups here in Montreal. So we will take a break on deck when we return. Should be in around 20 minutes time. The semifinals of the 1500, the second running, and then we'll see the semis of the just completed 1000 meter quarters. So that's on the way when we return to the Maurice Richard Arena in Montreal. Coverage of the ISU World Cup second stop in Montreal continues in about 10 minutes time.
And back at it from World Cup 2 in Montreal. Maurice Richard Arena winding things down here today. Moving out of the first of three semifinal heats here in the women's 1500. Look at Courtney Ciro of Canada, the world overall number two from last season. Park G1 of Korea in this race. We'll see the top two and only maximum of one that will move on to the A final later on this afternoon. Good field though, Xander Velzebor in this 1500 meter race. Renee Stinge right there from Canada. Florence Brunel in helmet 77. We just saw her a moment ago. There's a look at Velzebor. Kind of a disappointing finish to her day yesterday. Finished first in the women's 500, but penalized. There's Hannah Desmet. Ready. Desmet a deep, deep threat in this race. Gold last week in the 1500. But in the first running of this 1500 yesterday, Desmet two penalties toward the end of that 15 resulted in a yellow card. So. Did not finish on the podium and lost a lot of points as far as the Crystal Globe is concerned. <laughs> Interesting to see if that impacts her strategy should she move on to the A final again. It was a raucous race. Donay Bly earned bronze. Kristen Santos Griswold was elevated to silver. And Kim Gilly of Korea won the gold. We'll see Santos Griswold coming up in the second semifinal. Kim Gilly will be in the third. So a lot of familiar faces in this. Second running of the 1500. Siro of Canada right now taking the early lead. Desmet right alongside. Park G1 of Korea right now nestling in in third position. The two Canadians toward the back of the pack. So there is Siro right now right on the right hip of a hand of Desmets. Selma Pautzma, helmet number 17. Right now, sixth place. Belzebor right in the middle. Six laps left. Again, they'll take the first and second, and a maximum of only one fastest third, presuming no advancements via penalty. And now, pace hastening up. We will have one video review from an incident just occurring a moment ago involving Canada and the Dutch. Four laps left. Siro, Desmet, 1-2. Stinge in fourth for Canada. And Velzebor in the eight helmet for the Dutch. A nice move from the middle of the pack. Now to second 
And we see a couple of skaters crash out out of that far corner. They'll take a second look at another incident. One lap to go, Desmet, Belzebor, and Siro, and clean ice back to Stinge in fourth. For the battle right now for second place, Siro goes inside, tries to get past Belzebor, and does not do it. So Anna Desmet and Alexander Belzebor unofficially, one two finish. Siro, 223.40. Finishing third, 223-378 now officially as they break it out to the thousandth of a second. But there will be two reviews. And again, we're getting live time communication from an official's liaison in Montreal. The first potential penalty involves Canada and the Dutch. But we don't have individuals listed, so we're not quite sure you know, who that involves, Velsbor and Pouchman both out there on the ice for the Netherlands. And you have three Canadians in this opening semifinal. The other one evidently has been already moved to a no call. So probably right in there, I would imagine is what they're examining. And there's some contact in the back of the race as well. So there's the finish. Desmet stays ahead of the fray. No contact with Hannah Desmet, at least in this semifinal. I have to think that she has something to prove after a little bit of uh, Desmet inflicted chaos yesterday in the other 1500. Florence Brunel out of the repechage making this semifinal. So there's Desmet, 26 year old bronze medalist from. Belgium, bronze in the thousand in Beijing. And again, from what we are being told, Desmet is in no way involved in these potential infractions. But still two yellow boxes in that video review embed in the bottom left corner of your screen. And here is what they're examining, at least initially. <laughs> Alan Gresheim in the upper left with a headset on. He's the chief referee on the ice. And we were told it was a potential Canada Dutch infraction right there at the back. And that's Florence Brunel, number 77. Lost her footing a bit, slid forward, and then appeared to take out Poutsma. But again, at the time at which that potential penalty occurred, talking about fifth, sixth place, sixth, seventh in that race at that stage. And it still is being reviewed. Two more semifinals on the way. And if there is, for some reason, an advancement out of this race, that means that no fastest thirds would move on to the A final. So it's a big call. So the skaters for the second semi preparing. A very good attendance over the course of this, not just this weekend, but last as well to begin the World Cup short track season. From all over the world following their favorite sport. A lot of kids came out on Friday, about both World Cup sessions on some field trips, get out of school, enjoy a day watching some great athletes, the world's best on the ice. And, you know, skipping some class, it's never a bad thing. And now they are making the announcement there is a penalty charged in that race. And here are the results. The penalty goes against Steenge of Canada. And they advance Poutsma to the B final, certainly not the A. And right now, Searles 223-378 is right now on the bubble. 
So here's a look at the penalty again to the to the back of the pack here. Penalty against Steenge, skater number 21 for Canada. Failure to give way. So Poutsma moves on to the B final. And the penalty charged against Renee Steenge of Canada. So a look at the start list for the second semifinal of this women's 1500. And that includes Kristen Santos Griswold of the United States. One silver in the 1500 yesterday. Santos Griswold on the podium twice last week in both thousand editions. Gold in the first, bronze in the next. He's had a terrific start to this World Cup season. Look at Takanama, Esther Toth, Zhuwa Li of China, Gong Li also of China. Ray Nakashima from Japan, Petra Vankova from the Czech Republic. That's the field. And again, Desmond and Velzebor are through. And Sorel right now is hopeful that she will get a shot to move on to the A final later today. Santos Griswold, second spot right now for Team USA. She won all six national championships about a month ago. Olympian in Beijing and really coming into her own. Second spot for the American. Juali, a little contact against Santos Griswold. And Kristen did well to maintain her balance, stays on her skates and is back in a second. That will be reviewed, as you see by that yellow box in the lower left. Toth, right now, setting the pace. From the back, Gong Lee winds it up, tries to get around Santos Griswold. And the American has the Chinese skater passing her, and another one attempting on the inside. And now opening for Santos Griswold somehow, grabs the lead. Staying away now from trouble. She has been harassed a bit over the first six laps of this race. So now speeds ahead and tries to pull away. Gong Li with her, then there's a gap to Toth and Nakashima. Coming up on three laps to go. Santos Griswold, boy, she has nearly been knocked off her blades in this race, nearly passed inside and out simultaneously. Ducked in, found the lead somehow, and now is pulling away. So Gong Li along for the ride as the American and the Chinese skaters are 1-2 on a far lead. Top two will advance to the A final. And no issues around the final corner, and well done for Kristen Santos Griswold. That wasn't easy in the middle of the race. Close to going down. Stephen Goff, head coach for Team USA, pleased. That was not an easy trip. We'll see on this replay where a little bit back behind that spot where we see now with Santos Griswold. Almost knocked off her blades and then nearly passes. There was a little bit of chaos beginning and then Santos Griswold evidently saying this is just a little bit too uncomfortable for me. As you see the, the action going on behind the lead pack. Santos Griswold along with Gong Li of China. The results from the second semi. And one more semi-final to go, and that 2.23 time for Soro is still holding up with one more semi-final to go. And there's the list of the starters. Kim Gilly. Talked about all of her credentials. 
before she even turns 20 years of age. She won the first run in the 1500 yesterday. Gold in the second run in the 1000 last week. Top 1500 meter skater in the world last year. Couple of golds. Silver here in Montreal last year. Inside position. Shim Suki of Korea in the middle of your screen in helmet six. Ready. Zhang Yi's of China. Chiara Betsy of Italy. Chloe Olivier from France. Gloria Ioriati from Italy. And a couple of Hungarian skaters that came out of the repechage with Veggie and Silzea Nemetz. So those are the eight in this last semifinal. We've seen Desmet, Velzebor, Santos Griswold, and Gong move through to the eighth final. And right now, Courtney Soro of Canada on the bubble as far as time goes. But that time she put up, quick. 2.23. To put it in perspective, third place out of the semifinal heat we just saw was Zhu Ali at 240. So about 17 seconds slower. So we'll see if that impacts the pace of this race at all. If you're thinking, if I can't finish top two, third, it'll have to be Swift. And there goes Kim Gilly, number four. Jim Suki to the outside in front. Gilly right now fourth. But if we know anything about Kim Gillies' style, comfortable right where she is in this very long race. But when she wants to go, it's like a space shuttle taking off. Zhang Yi is in front for China. So we'll say Nimet right now, that's close second. Shimsuki third. And now watch Kim Gilly. There she goes on the outside from fifth. Passes her teammate, Shim Suki, and accelerates further. And just like that, Kim Gilly fighting for the lead, and Shim Suki's right behind her. So Korea 1-2, and Kim Gilly, that patented move that she makes look so easy. Three laps left. Kim and Shim are 1-2. Yang Yi's right now third. It's a tough chore to try and... Hunt down one of these two Koreans. Kim and Shim, one, two. Chang Yi's, here's the bell. And time will not be a, a factor in this race. Siro will go through as they cross at around 2.30. Chang Yi's 2.31. So Courtney Siro from Canada out of the first semifinal will also move through. Kim Gilly claims this one in 2.30 and change. Shim Saki low 2.31. So third place finish for Zhang Yi's will not be good enough to reach the A final. Well, we have a lot of years ahead of us to watch the growth and the special ability of Kim Gilly. So she will move on to another A final in the 1500 and look to win them both this weekend. That is not an easy chore. That's where the move took place, and Shim Suki, she was ready for it. I mean, Shim knows the style and the ability of Kim Gilly. And I would imagine is during that race when Shim Suki realizes, hey, Kim has not yet made her move. I'll be ready when she does, and just kind of follow her shadow, and that's exactly what Shim Suki did. So there's Kim Gilly. Pleasant demeanor. And another determined win in the semifinal. So Zhang, Silze Nemet, and Oriati on the way to the B final. So here are the advancements to the A final, top of that grid. Soro moves in by time. Shim, Kim are through. Christian Santos, Griswold, Velzibor, and Desmet. That's going to be a terrific field in the 1500 again. Most of the competitors we saw in that absolute titan clash in the 15 will be back again today. And now to the first of three semis on the men's side, the 15. 
three heats, 23 skaters remain. Eight will be in this opening semifinal. Peter Riches of Great Britain inside position. Spent some time training in the Netherlands. Go. Moving from start. London about four years ago. Ready. Pascal Dion, the lone Canadian in this race. Friso Ebons, one of the top 1500 meter skaters last year, number three in the 15 over the course of the World Cup season. Lee Wen Long of China, the Olympic silver medalist in the 1000 in Beijing. It's Akilat, Nathan Thomas of Poland, advance out of the repechage. Yu Matsubayashi from Japan, Michael Nowinski, the youngster from Poland. So 13 and a half laps. They will take the top two and identical to the women's 15, a maximum of one third place finisher. Here's Pascal Deon out in front. It's Zach Delat in the airbrushed helmet. Number 23, Delatz into the lead. We get our first crash out of the race. The Brit, Peter Riches, goes down. So that leaves seven currently on the ice. There will be a review on a potential penalty. Three Soy Bonds, second. The Dutch are two and three with now six laps to go. Still Pascal Dion. Ivans, Delatz, and it's Nowinski and Thomas, the two Polish skaters, fourth and fifth. Nothing yet from Lee Wenlong. Lee, fifth at that stage, now makes a move to the inside. Ivans overtaking the lead from Dion with three laps left. Lee is now up into fourth. Delat sitting third. Two laps to go. Friso Ibans, chased by Dion. He's just trying to hold a second spot. It's sucked a lot. Right now, third. There's the bell. Ibans and Dion around the final corner. And a 1 2 finish. So, Friso Ibans, the 25 year old from Aaron Vane, claims the opening semifinal. They're taking a look at three potential infractions. One of them has already been cleared. But the second one involves a skater from China against Matsubayashi. And no word yet on the third element as far as a review here in this opening semifinal. That's where Riches went down. No call there. That has been cleared up. That's the moment where Friso Ibans took the lead away from Dion, but again, the top two go through. So there's not a counter for Pascal Dion. He was just then trying to defend his two spot, which he did. It's Dr. Lott finishing third. And still having a look at Two other elements in this opening semifinal. Alan Gresham on the headset again, taking a look in communication with the officials in the video replay booth. And again, we have not gotten word on the third yellow box. Well, there are two yellow now, but there were three. So the third element, we're not being instructed as to where they're looking as far as that goes. Potential penalty involving Li Wenlong of China. That's what they're taking a look at as far as the second element in that video review box. For the third, we've got no indication as to what that might be. But it doesn't appear to be anything that will impact at least the top two finishers in this race. Friso Imans, Pascal Dion.
Couple of new officials in the video replay booth this week compared to last. Alan Grefsheim was not the chief referee on the ice last week. They rotate, he's in. The two assistants on the ice are returners from last week. That includes Yang Yang S, one of the sports legends. I don't know if that's just a regular Sunday gear for that beautiful young girl or if it's a Halloween costume. Either one could apply, Halloween in a couple of days. My two-year-old will be going out as Baby Shark. Coming up on, what is that, Wednesday? Tuesday? Yeah, mothers, fathers, young boys, young girls, yeah, the same family right there. How beautiful is that, right? Oh, a natural. As photogenic as they come, don't take her off the camera, please. This is the best we've seen all weekend. <laughs> it appears as though they've declared the, the impact on the Japanese skater from Lee Wenlong as shared responsibility, so it doesn't appear as there's going to be any penalty there, and the third element has also been cleared away. So Ibans and Dion... On to the A final, 216, 494 to lots. And we will watch that. So we're gonna maximum advance of one more to the A final by third place time. Here's what they were taking a look at involving Matsubayashi and Lee Wen Long. Toward the back, no penalty, share responsibility, that's determination. And they were looking at two other elements, but they have to clear those up. So two more semifinals to go in this 1500. Steven Dubois, the Olympic silver medalist in the 1500 in Beijing. He's in this semi. Stan Desmets of Belgium. Kim Gun Woo of Korea. There's a look at Dubois. To the start. Ready. Olympic silver medalist in Beijing in this 1500. Last year, though, he excelled really most specifically at the 500 level, but he was third overall. A tremendous year. What a, what a day it was for Canada yesterday. D'Angelo, Pierre Gillet, Ricky Doak, Donny Blaine. Now Dubois. Dubois would like to get his way onto the podium here in this 1500. Clayton De Clemente on the ice for the United States, third position. Lorenzo Previtali from Italy in the blue kit near the front. Kyle Tracy of Great Britain, Kazuki Yoshinaga from Japan, and advancing out of the repechage, Tomas Natalini of Italy. Yoshinaga came out of the repechage as well. He got through with a win. Natalini got through on a penalty. Kyle Tracy. Out in the front in the moment. Kim Gun Woo back on the national team for Korea second. Natalini right now third. Dubois hanging out now in fifth. Seven laps left. Still Tracy. We saw him try to do this yesterday. Got to get out early in a long race and outrace everybody to the finish. So a B final win for the Brit yesterday. Still Tracy, five laps left. Dubois up to fourth. Kim Gun Woo, no opportunity yet at that inside pass. Desmet third. Now we'll see does Tracy have the speed and the ability to fend off Kim Gun Woo. No. There's the easy pass by Kim Gun Woo. Tracy to second. Dubois still fourth. Again, top two advance automatically to the A final. Dubois, work to do. He's in fourth. Desmet first on his radar. Dubois can't get around him wide. There's the bell. It's the final lap. It is Kim. It is Tracy still in second. This would be huge for Great Britain. There goes Dubois, though, around Tracy in the final corner. And Dubois steals the AQ spot to the A final. Kim Gunwoo wins it. 
What an effort by Niall Tracy. He was one corner away from taking Great Britain to an A final. And that is a pretty arduous second place finish for Dubois. He will use a lot of energy to finish second, but advance he will. Well, that would have been one of the terrific storylines of this World Cup second weekend had Tracy sneaked into the A final. Again, he took the lead with about nine laps to go and took on all challengers. He seeded the lead with a couple laps left to Kim Gun Woo, but then did very, very well against Dubois to keep him from passing him until entering that very last corner. There's the pass by Kim Gun Woo, and here's that last pass into the final corner by Steven Dubois. Raises that right index finger and successful victory. Victory meaning moving on to the A final. So Tracy with that 219, 585 will not move through via time. No chance to do so. He was about three seconds shy of Itzhak Dalat, who still is on the bubble. So now to the last semifinal in men's 15. Park G1. Class of the field, Jordan Pierre Gillet of Canada won gold in the 500 yesterday in an incredibly fast and deep 500A final. And Pietro Siegel, silver at the Worlds last March in this event. Song Jiwa of China, Jun Boer of the Netherlands, Brandon Kim of the United States. Shabakana from Kazakhstan. So those are the seven. Park Jiwan wearing a helmet one. Crystal Globe champion last year. The inaugural year for the Crystal Globe. He won gold in the thousand last week. The first running of it on this Montreal ice. The world champ of the 1500 back in March. Now for Brandon Kim, in case you've not been with the broadcast over the weekend, he's a student at Stanford University for the United States and has not had a lot of ice time over the last several months. He's engrossed in his studies, was not on the active roster for the first World Cup last week in Montreal. He actually flew in late Monday night. They got him on the ice on Tuesday. He has not had a lot of ice time, but he has a lot of talent. And he's fared pretty well over the course of this weekend. I do not know if he's going to stay on the roster for the four continents or if he's heading back to school after today's final day of World Cup 2. Shabakanov had the lead. Park Jiwan will take it back. Song Jiwan, China third. Then it's Brendan Kim for the U.S. That yellow box indicates a potential penalty, at least a review involving Song of China against Brandon Kim. And there's Song again, initiating a little bit of contact. That knocked Shamakanov all the way back. That will be reviewed as well. So a couple of potential penalties against Song of China. Inside three laps. Park Jiwon, Song Jiwa, one, two. Seagal of Italy right now third. Brandon Kim fourth. There's the bell. Park Jiwan in front. Seagal up to second place for Italy. Brandon Kim goes outside, still fourth. And the finish line gets to Park Jiwan. Seagal finishing second. Song third. And the Itzhak Delac time finishing third in the opening semi will move him through to the A final. So Park Jiwan claims it. Seagal, nice run, finishing second. And again, a couple of things to review, both involving the Chinese skaters. Song Jiuan, helmet 36. One against Brandon Kim against the United States right here. That bump, a little extra on that right shoulder bump. So they will take a look there. They will also take a look at this potential bit of contact involving Song once again. That one against Shamakanov.
So Song, as it was, finished third. But he is right now in the line of potentially to run a penalty. They will look at a pair. Park G1 heading through the semis. And Pietro Siegel, world silver medalist in the 1500 last year. He'll move through as well. And for Itzhak Galat, again, unofficially just by my numbers that I'm kind of scribbling down here, he's never been on an individual podium in the World Cup. But he'll move through to the A final here. Alan Gresham over to the monitor. So they will not resurface the ice once the 15 concludes here. We'll move straight to the semis of both the women's and the men's thousand. So here's what they're taking a look at involving Song Jiwa of China. And they will assess a penalty against Song. Now, the, what I'm trying to figure out is where they assess the penalty. Was it against the American Brandon Kim or was it against the skater from Kazakhstan, Shamakalov? Either way, Song will be penalized. And here are the results. So there's the penalty to Song at the bottom of your screen. And you see they have moved Shamakanov to the A final. So it's a lot will not move through to the A because of that advancement. So here is the penalty. Song coming in in the red uniform, held at 36 right there against Shamakanov, and it happened in a battle for that second position. And that's why Shamakanov will be moved through to the A final. So that moves Itzhak Galat off of the bubble by time, and he'll be in the B final instead. And Shamakanov for Kazakhstan will race for the gold. So now we'll swing ahead to the women's 1,000 semis. Just saw the quarters about, what, 40 minutes ago? And the start list of these five. There is So We Men inside position in this first semi. Top two advance and a max of one fastest third. And now we get a whistle and down go both Canadians. Ricky Doak, Donnie Bly. Crashed into the wall out of that first corner. Camilla Stormowska, Poland in this race. Ariana Siegel, along with Sylvie Min. Those are the five. In the second semi, it'll be Gagnon, Lee Soyun, Simone, Michelle Velzebor, and Park Jiyun of Korea. So those are the ten vying for the spots in the A final. So after these two semis of the thousand on both the men's and women's side, they will resurface the track. We'll come back with the B and A finals of the 1500 for the men and women. Then the B and A finals of the thousand. And then on to the relay A finals. The B finals were raced earlier this morning. So winding things down in Montreal, but still big finishes awaiting. Dorbowska having both of her blades checked out. 23-year-old who's been on a World Cup podium one time three years ago in Dordrecht in the 500. Down a blade, checking out the adjustments. Bronze medalist yesterday in the 15. Stormoska back on the ice. Still working though on Ricky Doak. We claimed that gold medal yesterday in front of her family, her biggest supporter, she said. 
Everybody was here. All pays big ROI for Dilk yesterday. So ready now for the restart. Close up look at Ricky Dilk and off the line from third position. Dilk second. And so we man in helmet 18 for Korea. Opens things up in the lead. Now Storm Oscar, Poland. Nine laps. Top two automatically heading to the A final. Siegel and So came out of the same quarterfinal a little while ago. So we in right now. Dona Blay second. Doak third. Five laps left. Storm Oscar looking for a little crease. Gets past Doak. Up in a third. And there goes Dona Blay. The lead grabbed away from So. Nothing yet from the back from Sigelm. So reclaims the lead from Blyde. Coming up on two laps to go. Storm Oscar waiting for a moment in third. So tapping the accelerator. Bly sticking right with her. Doak in fourth. There's the bell. So and Bly navigate the penultimate corner. Storm Oscar, nothing in, nothing out. And it will be So and Bly to the A final. So Danae Bly, bronze in the 1500 yesterday. She's on her way to another A final. This one in the 1000. And so we in. She was the world junior champion in the 1000 four years ago. It's a very good distance for her. Convincing semifinal win for So we in. So time for Storm Oscar finishing third, 131-268. Again, a maximum of one third place finisher, either from this semi or the next. There's the time for Storm Oscar. So and Bly are on the way through. Doak and Seagal ahead of the B final. Well, at least Seagal potentially to the B final, that is. And now the final five in the second semi. Park ji and Lee Soyeon from Korea. Gagnon inside position for Canada right there. Claudia Gagnon, 24 years old, Montreal native. Ready. She's the first cousin to Joshua Palmer, a wide receiver for the Chargers. Had a big game last week against the Chiefs. She'll be able to watch him play tonight on NBC against the Bears. Played wide receiver at the University of Tennessee. So Gagnon. The lone Canadian in this second semifinal. So four skaters instead of five as Majesh Simone of Hungary did not start. So there's Lee in front. Ganyo in second. Park ji in third. There goes Michelle Velzebor from the back to the front. Five laps left. Michelle Bellsmoor, 20 years of age. Younger sister to Alexandra and gives up the lead back to Lee. Lee Soyo, now the pace picking up. Bellsmoor shuttled back to fourth. And now Park joins Lee at the head of the pack, trying to get around Gagnon and does. She's not done yet. Tries to take down her teammate here. Two laps to go, the two Koreans in front. Park and Lee. Velzebor looking for room on the inside into third. There's the bell, final lap. Park, Lee, Velzebor third, 
last corner. And the two Koreans unofficially moving through. Belgium are 138-3-6. If there are no penalties, that will not be fast enough to move through. So it would be Stormowska if there are no penalties. And what they're looking at right now is a potential penalty involving the Canadian skater Gagnon against Velzibor. So we'll take a look at what the crew in the video booth will be looking at here. Velzibor in the 16. And it will be right here involving Gagnon, that little bump. That is what they're taking a look at. Was it enough to impact Vilsabor in the race? So Vilsabor finishing third. We'll see what the crew in the video booth decide. So Lee Soyon, Park Ji Yoon. A one-two finish. Still under review. Elzebor looking to the scoreboard to see how her fate, either in a B final or an A final, might be impacted by whatever decision that they make here. We'll take one more look. The penalty is right now potentially on the Canadian skater Gagnon right there into that corner. So the little bump there. Taking a look at it from several different angles. Again, Velsbor, pretty good position here, leaning in. That's Gagnon in the 19. Meanwhile, Lee and Park will unlace their boots. They know they're moving through. So Korea will have three in the A final. So we men, Lee Soyeon, Park ji Right now the question is, who will join those three along with Bly of Canada? And there will be a penalty assessed going on Gagnon of Canada, and Velzibor will be advanced to the A final. That means Stormowska's time will not move her through. She'll be in the B instead. So the penalty against Gagnon. Here's one more look at what the officials decided. Failure to give away. So the penalty charged against Claudia Gagnon of Canada. And Velzibor, it was in that second position when that infraction took place, moved through to the A. So we will see Michelle Velzibor on the ice with a shot at gold. So here are the contenders for the A final. First five on that list. So Park and Lee, the three Koreans, Bly and then Velzibor. Storm Oska now bumped from the fastest time of a third place finisher to the head of the B final. Now on to the two semifinals of the men's 1,000. Jens Van Schwoots, Lu Xiaoang, Azipati, Miata, Yang from Korea. Van Schwoots in the helmet nine. And this race already has some serious pace to it. Jang and Miata taking it out hard. Liu Xiaoang right now third, the overall world champion, back-to-back -back years in 21 and 22, the Olympic 500 champ. Miata, out ahead of Yang. Liu in third, then is Van Schwoetz fourth, Yazapati fifth. Van 
And Trout cuts in and gets around Lu Xiaowang. Four laps to go. And Van Trout not done. Cuts in and gets around Zhang. And Van Trout up to second. Miata still in front. Lu Xiaowang now says it's my time. Lu to third. And Van Trout, who tender around that corner. We'll have a review. It's Van Trout and Lou now first and second. There's the bell. Van Trout and Lou Xiaowang, one, two. Chang in third, Miata fourth. Last corner, and Van Trout will get there along with Lou Xiaowang. So those are the official, or probably the unofficial numbers. Looking at a potential infraction, but it appears as though it's going to be a no call from what I'm seeing on my screen. So Jens Van Trout, along with Liu Xiaowang, unofficially on to the A final in the men's thousand. It's a bold last pass by Van Trout. He did not have a lot of room when he went to the front with about two laps to go. Miata had the lead, it was that move right here into the corner, near stumble. Stayed wide of the markers. And the dividends on the pass and the win for Van Trout. There's a look at the end of Van Trout. Cool facade, helmet off, shades off. One more race for him in the A final. Racing for gold here in about the next hour or so. Still looking at a review and I mean, they. this is not on our screen, but they might be taking a look at Van Trout on this pass with some contact against Miata. So hold the phone on Van Trois moving to the A final. Again, we're getting real time communication from an official liaison in Montreal, but this is not what we're showing on our screen. Whatever they were taking a look at, they said no call, but I don't believe it was that. So there's the coaching staff of the Dutch showing Van Trois, and he's trying to explain what happened there and what led to the little contact exiting that corner. Van Trois seems pretty confident at least he's kind of reading his nonverbals right there that there may not be a penalty issued. He's talking with Miata right there. So we shall see. They have not yet determined the outcome. One more semifinal on the way in the thousand, but no official results yet. So this is either sending Miata through on the penalty or Van Schwout earning the win in the semifinal. And the penalty goes to Japan, Shogo Miata. So Van Schwout will go through. So Van Trout and Liu Xiaowang and Zhang Sung Wu of Korea will also head to the A final potentially on time. There's one more semifinal to go. So the declaration is that Miata did not give enough room for Van Trout to kind of get back inside the barrier into that corner. So the penalty charge against the Japanese skater Shogo Miata. So one last semifinal. Lucas Beckenhauser, a brilliant finish to qualify for the semifinal about an hour ago. Wang Dae Hoon of Korea inside position. There he is, helping 125. One of two Koreans in this semi. Lee Jung Min, the other. Felix Pichon of Poland and Leon of Canada. Those are the five. Peter.
Owen for Canada. Wong right now, second. Six laps to go. And the lead to Wong, Laon to second. Peugeot in third. And Peugeot gets around Laon, he's in a second. They'll take a look there. So, little peek by Wong, looking behind him. Here comes Lee, his teammate. Swinging wide, and Lee will grab the lead from Wong. Two and a half laps left. And Lee in excellent position. Wong with some clear eyes behind him. And the two Koreans begin to pull away. Speckenhauser up into third as they move to the bell, but a lot of room to recover for Speckenhauser. As Lee and Wong around the corner. Here comes Speckenhauser one last time, and he'll make that one close. But they didn't quite get there. Boy, closing speed from Speckenhauser. We've seen that three times now this weekend. I mean, he was several meters behind going into that last lap, and Speckenhauser almost sneaked his way to the A final. I mean, you look at the final times, he's two thousandth of a second from the A final. That's remarkable closing speed by Lucas Speckenhauser. And he did that to Lou a couple of times over the course of this weekend. It looked like there was no shot for anybody to finish other than the two Koreans in first and second in that final lap. And we'll see on this kind of a melt of replay. You see there Speckenhauser back the pack in the blue outfit. As the two Koreans pull away, this is near about the last lap. The two Koreans are on the last corner. All of a sudden, here comes Speckenhauser. You can't give up. I tell you what, when you're in a race with Lucas Speckenhauser, it doesn't matter how big your lead is, do not throttle back. Because Speckenhauser now is gaining a reputation as one of the best closers right now on the ice. So they're checking a potential penalty. Now, we'll also look at the final time for Speckenhauser. Because right now, Jang out of the opening semi, 125-673. So after they review this and post the official results, we'll give you the contenders for the A final. They will resurface the ice, and then we will come back with the B and A finals of the women's and men's 1500. That's next on the docket. Still taking a look. And right there is what they're taking a look at. Felix Pigeon contact there against Maxime Le Le Laoun. Shoulder jousting from both of them. And they will assess a penalty on the Canadian, Maxime Laoun. So that will move Pigeon on to the A final. Speckenhauser will head to the B final. So Wang, Lee, and Pigeon all advance. So those will be the five to the A final. Wang, Li, Pigeon, Lu Xiaowang, and Jens Van Schwutz. Here's one more look at the penalty that was assessed against the Canadian, and a drifting left, ram it against the upper body of Felix Pigeon. So Pigeon will head to the A final in the 1,000. So they will resurface the ice briefly, and the skaters will get ready. We'll come back with the b and finals at both the men's and the women's 1500. There are the five heading to the A final. Van Trout, Lou, Juan, Lee, Pigeon. Speckenhauser, that huge finish. It's the B final along with Yazapati, Yang. And so we will cut away for a break. 
And in about 11 minutes time, we'll come back to 1500 meter BNA finals on the way from Short Track, Montreal.
celebrate the fun and the joy of ice skating across the globe. Lots of fun, lots of smiles, and a great way to celebrate this first day of world ice skating. De l'Italie, Pietro Sigal. Les Pays-Bas, Pietro Emond. Le Kazakhstan, Yerkebolov Shoporov. Et la Corée, Kim Godho. Et du Canada, Pascal Dion. Et Steven Dubois. Bon finaliste sur le bras masculin du Pays. World Cup Montreal continues into its final session for individual racing here this weekend. And we're getting ready now for the B final, the women's 1500 meter. And there's a look at the seven contenders here, the B final, Park Jiwan from Korea, two from China, Zhang Yi's, Jiwa Li. A final will follow, then the B and A on the men's side, then we'll get the BNA finals at both the men's and women's thousand. Then one more resurfacing, then the relays. And then we dim the lights for good in Montreal after two straight weekends of World Cup action. 
in 600 meter time. Starting in position number one, Lani Perron from the Republic of Korea. So the quick introductions here, Park Ji-won. Chang Yi's of China, 24-year-old in position two. Rebecca Silice in the Met from Hungary in three. Italy's Gloria Iderati. Zhuo Li of China, 27-year-old. In position five, good ovation for Zhu. Position six is Japan from Japan, Nakashima Mire. Nakashima. And then Selma Pouchma. Already on a podium this weekend. Silver in the 500 yesterday. So those are the seven, 13 and a half laps in the B final of the women's 15. So just an, an easy glide to open things up. All the skaters still stretching out their legs. Nakashima stretching out both the right and the left. We've seen faster paces on the first full lap. And we'll see who will take charge and begin to speed things up a bit. Poutsman, just get a glance to make sure nobody's ready to rev it up. First full lap, look at that, 24 seconds. A final on the way. This Mets, Belzeborn. Kim Gilly, Santos Griswold, Chim Suki, Courtney Soro. Deep quality coming up in the A final. And many of whom we saw yesterday, which was one of the, the best match races all weekend here in Montreal. Pouch Mob top. Uriati from Italy. Still staying the Met. And now we're seeing the lap times cut by about a half. You could have made a pop tart in the time it took to clear the first lap around 30 seconds. Now, no more pop tarts. Here we go. Eight laps to go. And there goes Pouchma in front for the Dutch. Uriati second. Nakashima of Japan third. Park ji right now, second from the back for Korea. Pouchma still from the front. And now burning from the back to the front. And that's Zhang Yi's. Zhang in the lead, Pouchma giving chase. Yoriati, third, four laps left. So we'll say Nimet still hanging in in fourth. And Pouchba on that corner reclaims the lead. Iorati up to seconds. Crossing the line with two laps to go. Still Selma Pouchba from the Netherlands. 24 year old Silver in the 500 yesterday behind Ricky Doak. A little peak. Iorati still a close second. Final lap. Chang Yi tries one more push on the outside. She won't get there, and Selma Pouchma will win the B final. And boys, there ever an off-balance battle at the line. <laughs> Sliding through Zayn Nemetz on her backside. The last second lunge to the line for that second spot. Photo finish between three skaters. So Selma Pouchman, Olympian from the Netherlands, part of their gold medal 3000 relay squad in Beijing, born in The Hague, moved to France about nine years ago for the short track team, and then came back to the Netherlands squad in 2019. Pouchman will win the B final. 
Now let's watch the finish here and see who might have gotten a blade up for second position. Yoriati, along with Zhang Yi's. Still saying the Mets on the inside. Here's the finish. Everybody's scrambling, markers flying, bodies falling. And a long slide on the back for Still saying the Mets. And they were taking a look at a potential penalty. It appears as though that has now been cleared up. And no penalty will be assigned. Strong race by Fioriati of Italy there. To clean up a little ice debris and get ready for the A final once the B final results are posted. The crowd's been sizable both weekends here in Montreal. Good to see. Sport deserves a whole lot more support and visibility. And there are the results. Pautzma, Fioriati got up for second. And it's a dead heat for third between the two Chinese skaters, Zhu and Zhang, tie for third. 257-363, that's hard to do in short track. Especially at a 1,500 meter. So getting the ice ready for the A final. And we saw some great entertainment in the A final of the first running of the 1,500 yesterday. We'll see most all of those competitors once again here today. And a look at the current Crystal Globe standings. Kim Gilly won the 1500 yesterday. Kristen Santos Griswold second in the standings. Finished with a silver yesterday. Gilly won yesterday. Santos Griswold silver. Then a Bly for the bronze. Desmet took a couple of penalties in that same race. Got a yellow card, so no points, which is pretty important. Saro finished fourth. So we will see Desmet, Saro, Kim, Santos, Griswold all again in the 1500. Jim Saki is in this A final. Gong Li of China is in the A final. And Alexandra Velzibor. Those three were not in the A final yesterday. So as deep as they come. The 1500. There's Anna Desmets. Alexandra Velzibor. World champion in the 500 and the 1000 last year. Courtney Soro. She won the four cons 1000 last year and the 1500. Kim Gilly. Have to imagine she's still the skater to beat. World champion, 19-year-old, World Cup champ already. Shim Suki drafted hard behind Kim Gilly in the semifinals to ride that here into the A-Final. Second of the two Koreans here in the A-Final. Kristen Santos Griswold. And a little bit of uncertainty earlier in the week on if she would raise both 15s or a 1500 in the 1,000 this week and opted for both 15s. And so far paying off. We saw Griswold finish with silver yesterday. There's Gong Li of China. So those are the seven. Santos Griswold looking for her fourth podium of this short track season. Kim Gilly is as well. Won the 1,000 last week. Silver to Desmet in the 15 last week. And then claimed the first run into the 15 yesterday. So the skaters take their spots. Gong Lee will line up in the second row right behind Santos Griswold of the U.S. Desmet, inside position. Ready. A final of the 1500. How will this one play out? And how aggressive will Hannah Desmet be today compared to 24 hours ago when she was penalized 
not once, but twice in the same A final and received a yellow card. So Desmet toward the back and the base white with yellow down the sleeves. Gong Lee out front. And there goes Shim Suk Hee for Korea. It's a 13 and a half lap race. Santos Griswold follows Veljabor from fourth and fifth, now to first and second. Veljabor and Santos Griswold, two of the best pure sprinters on the circuit. And it's Gong Lee back on top for China, nine laps to go. Kim Gilly, where she normally is, which is about in the back half of the pack, and now Gilly will begin to take control with eight laps to go. Gilly to the lead, here's Desmet on her hip, ducks in second. Santos Griswold coming up for the U.S. A couple of skaters wide, and now the lead belongs to the American. I think it's hard enough to chase down Kim Gilly. That might be Santos Griswold's strategy here. Stay in front of Kim Gilly and work the pace. Desmet third, Gong Lee fourth, Belzebor fifth. Still Santos Griswold and she's picking up the pace a bit more. Inside the final three laps, the Santos Griswold have the steam power to fend off Kim Gilly because the attack is about to come. Santos Griswold still in the lead. Gilly tries the inside pass and gets there. Desmet follows as well and splits the difference. Hannah Desmet into the lead for Belgium. Gilly on the chase. Santos Griswold third, the final corner. Here's Desmet winning gold. What a move. Kim Gilly for silver. Santos Griswold for the bronze. Unofficial, they will have a review. Just when it looked like it was the dogfight between Kim and Santos Griswold. Kim made the move, created some space though, and Desmet just kind of stalking in third, saw the opening, and there are no two yellow or no two penalties and a yellow card for Desmet today. Major atonement for Hannah Desmet. So Santos Griswold forced kind of a change in strategy for Kim Gilly, not allowing Gilly to race from the back to the front and control and dictate the pace. Santos Griswold took it back. Gilly late looking for the inside pass, but as they came around that corner, bursting in between, and it is met. And she was able to outraise the other two to the line or cross that final corner. Perfect strategy by Hannah Desmet. Smile still on the face of Kim Gilly, though. There's Desmet. That's a different response for Desmet than what we saw yesterday. Huge disappointment from her with the two penalties and the yellow card. Well, that did not impact her race today. Mental strength, executing the game plan, and kind of waiting for the right spot is. We see the chief referee, Alan Gresham, again looking at the monitor. No official results yet. And we'll see where they are looking here. Again, we have an official's liaison, perhaps on the pass of Kim Gilly on Santos Griswold, which led to this met. Threading the needle. We're not getting any indication from our official liaison on what they may be looking at, but clearly by the replays that we're seeing here, it is that. And there will not be a penalty assessed on Kim Gilly there. So the results will stand. And it is met. Will win the 1500 meter gold. And they are now official. Desmet, Kim, Santos, Griswold, gold, silver, bronze. 
boy, a race like that with those heavyweight contenders, worth the price of admission, even if you've been here all day just for that race alone. That was great stuff. And out to the ice for the medal ceremony. So for the second time in three World Cup 1500s this year, Hannah just met top of the podium. Won last week in the only running of the 15. And then going back to last year, won the 1500 in the final World Cup event in Dordrecht. And also took it at Almaty when they ran it twice. So she is establishing herself as one of the absolute best at the 1500. But get used to seeing those three competitors on the same screen for a medal ceremony in, in this race. So the updated Crystal Globe standings, Kim Gilly, 55 points to the good on Santos Griswold Desmet, 80 points back at Kim, but remember she lost all points by virtue of that yellow card yesterday, and that's a lot to recover, especially when you're going up against uh, those two who are likely to reach a lot of A finals over the course of this World Cup season. There's the second 10 of the top 20. They will clear the ice and get ready now for the men's 1500 BA final. It's Octolot who is this close to reaching the A final. Only a penalty advancement of Yurke Bulan Shamakanov in the very final semi final heat. Bumped him from the A to the B. So there's a look at the start list. Brandon Kim of the United States is in it. Boer along with Delat, the two Dutch skaters. Niall Tracy of Great Britain also very, very close to moving on to an A final. Tracy just nipped by Stephen Dubois for second place in the second semi final. So the introduction now, look at it, Zach Delat. Still in search of his first individual World Cup medal. 
Matsubayashi of Japan. Number three from Poland, de la Pologne, Michal One of the top young sprinters, that is Michael Nowinski of Poland. It's been a really good weekend for Niall Tracy, for sure. He has earned a lot of respect. Curious to see how much gas he has in the tank after I mean, he put up huge effort in that semifinal to try and finish top two. He's only had about maybe an hour, plus or minus, to recover. There's Brandon Kim. And Toon Boer of the Netherlands. Those are the seven. So 13 and a half laps for the B final. Go to the start. Ready. You look ahead of the A final. One of the three from the podium yesterday will be in that A final. That's Kim Gun Woo. He won the bronze yesterday. But otherwise, not necessarily new names to an A final in the 15, but at least this weekend here in Montreal, they will be. And is meant to Belgium. Sister just won the 1500. So Stan races from the front. Olympic siblings. And now that's Brandon Kim of the US. Talked a lot about his travails to get to Montreal this week. Was back in Palo Alto really ever since the end of the US national championships in September, schooling at Stanford. There goes Tracy. Well, we'll, see how much gas is left in the tank. This is his style. I mean, he likes racing from the front and not really controlling the pace, kind of pushing the pace from what we've seen this weekend from Niall Tracy. If he's able to get out of here, here in Montreal, continue his training, don't be surprised if we see Niall Tracy in a 1,000 or 1,500 meter A final, but it will Spins out here, some contact. That will be a second review, so Tracy's down. And the race continues with Boer and Nalat. Brandon Kim right now third. So we'll have a couple of reviews when this B final ends. Delat on the inside makes the pass on his teammate. Brandon Kim resting third. We're going to take a look at a potential penalty against Nowinski of Poland, against one of the Dutch skaters. And there is the bell sounding as Delat has the lead with his teammate Boer right behind him. Desmet works his way around Brandon Kim, and it's Itzhak Delat winning the B final. Boer second, Desmet third. So we're not for an advancement on a penalty in the final semi, sending Shamakanov to the A final. It's like a lot would have been in the A final. But memories are short. Delot unfazed and wins the B final. No sulking for Itzak. Strong race for the Dutch. I think they're going to take a look at a couple of elements here. One is a potential penalty on helmet 59. That's Michael Nowinski of Poland making some contact with one of the Dutch skaters coming up here momentarily. Right there out of that corner. Swerving in, yeah, contact with Delat. So they will check on that. The other one is a potential penalty against Great Britain's Niall Tracy after he stormed out to the lead here as he made some contact there with Boer. And then Tracy took himself out of the race. And again, we appreciate our official liaison working this weekend up in Montreal to give us a little bit more information. There's a, bit, a robust group of fans who are watching this ISU Short Track World Cup on the official ISU Short Track YouTube page. We thank everybody for tuning in. Thousands have been watching over the course of last weekend and this weekend. A lot of great comments going on between uh, fans of certain skaters, fans of certain countries. 
And some newbies just kind of dipping into short track. We thank everybody for watching there. And on your local networks all around the world. Glad to be bringing it with you. And just the first couple of steps and hopefully some really good advancements here on the, on the broadcast side. You know, there's no commentary provided over the last couple of years. That now has changed. And perhaps just a step forward in some of their possibilities. And the official B final results. Only one penalty of the two examinations. It goes against Michael Nowinski of Poland. Niall Tracy was not charged with a penalty. But here's the, the late pass called against Nowinski. He's in the white and the red as he comes up, cutting hard inside the lot. And they're making some contact there. And that draws the penalty. But that did not impact a lot. He won the B final anyway. So the B final results are official as we now prep for the World Cup second run into the 1500 for the men A final. Won yesterday by William Dangeno of Canada. Wang Dae Hoon, the silver. Kim Gun Woo, the bronze. And an updated look at these standings on the men's side for the Crystal Gold. It's Kim Danjanu, a big surprise thanks to that big win yesterday. Canada 2, 3, and 10 in the top 10. And now the lights dim inside the Maurice Richard Arena. We'll see Free Soba until they have inside position, which is basically irrelevant here in the 1500. Park G1. Seagal, Shamakanov advance on a penalty in the last semifinal. So here are the introductions. Riso Imans, number three classification ranking the 1500 last year. 25 year old will have inside position here in the A final. And there's Pascal Dion of Canada. One last individual arousing bit of applause for Dion. Trying to get on the podium for the first time individually this year. Kim Gun Woo back on the national team. Bronze in the 1500 yesterday. He is a major threat. As is this guy, Stephen Dubois. The great character, the great smile, the great beard. Back on Montreal Ice, Dubois. Position number five from the Republic of Korea. And here is the defending Crystal Globe champion, Park Ji Won. Won five 1500 races last year in the World Cup season. They raced eight times. Here's Pietro Siegel. Siegel got a bronze in Dresden in the 1500 behind Lee Jun So. And here is Erkebulan Shamakanov of Kazakhstan. So good to see him in an A final. It's like a, a penalty advancement to do so. Shamakanov onto the ice for Kazakhstan, trying to steal a medal here in the 1500 A final. So the second run of the 1500 this weekend. Wang De Hoon won gold last week. Angelo won yesterday. So we will have a third different 1500 meter winner on the men's side in the first three 1500 races of the year. Which of these seven will it be? So Kim Gun Woo and Helmut 126. Right now in third. Skater to watch though. And the one helmet second from the back. Park Ji Won. Park Ji Won, the top 1500 racer clearly last year. 
world champion in the 1500. 13 and a half lap race, and he will judge. He's kind of based on who's setting the pace, who's in front of him, on exactly when is go time for him. And for Stephen Dubois, it's his time. And there goes Kim Gun Woo with him. And Park Ji Wan not wasting any time. Just easing his way to the front. Dubois and Kim, second and third. So Park Ji Wan will race from the front. Eight laps to go. Iman's fourth. Dion Siegel, Shamakanov, the back three. Six, six laps left. Five to go, still Park Jiwan. Dubois and Kim shuffled back a bit. Now, a little move by Siegel. Steps in front of Imons. Five to go. Dubois sizing up Park Jiwan. Swinging wide, thought about an outside pass, not there. And he will hold back one more time, hold back on the reins. Now Dubois cuts in. Little bump in there with Park Jiwan. Corners are spread out, and Park Jiwan sprints back toward the lead, but he won't get it. His teammate, Kim Gun Woo, has the lead. Coming up on one lap to go. It is Kim, it is Park, and Dubois. One, two, three. Final lap. Kim Gun Woo, Park Jiwan, Dubois on the chase in third. Final corner. Kim Gun Woo wins it. Park the silver, Dubois the bronze. Kim Gun Woo announces his return to World Cup level. Another gold medal for Kim Gun Woo. There will be a review. This is unofficial for the moment. Kim Gun Woo won the thousand, the second running of it last week. So we will take a look. The penalty potential involves Dubois and Park Ji Wong. And the communication that we are getting is if there is a penalty, it would very likely be charged against Dubois of Canada. So Kim Gun Woo watching from third place as Dubois and Park Ji Wong battle it out most of the race from the front. And as Dubois couldn't get around Park the first time, tried a hard inside pass toward a corner. And the markers got knocked around. There's the little contact. And this is right when Kim Gun Woo took control. They both swerved wide. Both skaters remain on their blades, but plenty of open space on the inside for Kim Gun Woo to steal it. So Kim Gun Woo, major enthusiasm across the line. Back on the senior national team. And now a second. World Cup gold. <laughs> There's Stephen Dubois said, oh, here we go again. Another third. We'll see if it holds, though. This is important for Dubois as far as the Crystal Globe standings go. If you get a penalty here, you lose the points and the medal. And we'll see what they decide. And there will be no penalty assessed. So the standings are true. Kim, Park, Dubois. Gold, silver, bronze. So here's one more look at the penalty they decided not to assess. Shared responsibility right there. You see Park kind of leaning back with that left shoulder, some contact from Dubois from his right. Kind of negated one another, so no penalty there. And the victory ceremony moments away. Kim Gun Woo from Korea wins gold. Park Jiwon silver. Stephen Dubois on home ice will take bronze again. Medal ceremony for the man 1500 meter at the ISU World Cup short track Montreal 2023. will be presented by the assistant referee Yang Yang. 
En troisième position, un gagnant de la médaille de bronze. In third place and winner of the bronze medal du Canada, Steven Dubois. En deuxième position, un gagnant de la médaille d'argent. In second place, and winner of the silver medal from the Republic of Korea, Park ji Première position et gagnant de la médaille d'or. In first place and winner of the gold medal from the Republic of Korea, Kim Gun Ho. Kim Gun Ho. Pas de mal d'applaudissements pour nos médaillés de medalists. Medal ceremony complete. Congratulations, Kim Gun Woo of Korea, winning the 1500. So the updated standings of the Crystal Globe to the moment, as we are now on deck for the BNA finals of both the men's and the women's thousand here in Montreal. Final individual events of this World Cup two. Following these. BNA finals. They will resurface the ice one more time and get this arena ready for the two big relays at the end, the capstone of the two weeks in Montreal. So, B final of the women's thousand. We'll see only three here Stormowska, Doak, Seagal. And then coming up in the A final of the thousand. So we men, Park Jae-yoon, Lee so yoon three of the five in the A-final will be Korean skaters. Ariana Seagal out of the repechage for the Olympian. 27-year-old now into the B-final. There is Kamila Stormowska, Olympian from Poland. Ricky Doak, regardless how this race plays out, what a... Superb weekend for her. Gold in the 500 yesterday. And there's Ariana Seagal. So nine laps for the B final. So it's Storm Oscar, helmet 27. Seagal in 30, Ricky Doak of Canada in 15. Canada on the team side, three individual gold medals this weekend. To go along with a couple of bronzes. The line, the 1500 yesterday. Dubois on the 1500 for the men just moments ago. Pierre Gillet won the 500. Angelo on the 15 and Doak yesterday took the 500 and a big surprise. Well, 
We'll see Team Canada in both A finals of the relays coming up. Don't want to miss those. Hotly competitive. Stormoska, Siegel, and Doak. Five laps remain in this B final. And there goes Doak, and the crowd rises up in their anticipation. Trying to get the lead, it's taking her a full lap, not there yet. Stormoska hangs in there. Doak still third. Siegel playing pretty good defense also in between. Two laps remain as they cross the line here. Does Doak have what it takes to get around these two very game, game competitors in front of her? Here's the bell, still Stormoska. Doak will give it one more shot. Stormoska to the last corner. And it will be a one, two, three. Stormoska, Siegel, Doak finish in the B final. Just not that extra gear for Doak. Stormoska and Siegel played very good defense out there, skated good races. Didn't appear to be a positional change in that entire race, start to finish. No real efforts by Siegel to get past Stormowska. Doak efforted for everybody to try and pass them both, but unsuccessful. So Stormowska of Poland wins the B final. And for Italy, their World Cup, with the exception of Speckenhauser, who we will see coming up in the B final on the men's side of the thousand. That is it on the women's side for Team Italy this weekend in Montreal. Val Sapina, another bronze medal in the 500 this week, just like she got last week. Mixed relay for the Italians. Secured a bronze yesterday as well. So now to the A final for the 1,000 meter for the women. Last week we saw Santos Griswold and Kim Gilly win each of the thousands. They ran it twice, but they both elected to race both of the 1,500. So as we get into the 1,000 meter A final here today, no winners from last year in the World Cup season, and even including the World Cup thousands from last week, no winners are in this A final. So Velzebor, Schulting, Soro, Bhutan, Santos Griswold, and Kim from last week. So somebody will claim a 1,000 meter A final gold medal. And this is kind of what Christian Santos Griswold was discussing early in the week when she was choosing which, which races to, to appear in, choosing to race both 1500s, gives now really an open field for anybody in this A final. So we men inside position for Korea. Here's the day play. She's had a great weekend. Bronze the 1500 yesterday. So there's Blay onto the ice. Park Jeon, the 24 year old from Korea. Three Koreans in this A final. Position number four, Lee Soyeon. So Silver in the thousand behind Santos Griswold, the first running last week. Her first individual World Cup medal. So she will be a pretty good threat in this one. And here's Michelle Velzibor. Talk a lot about Alexandra Velzibor, the world champion. This is her younger sister, Michelle, the age of 20. World bronze medalist at the junior level in the 500 a couple of years ago. So she is in an A final here in the 1,000. Oh, 
So one more shot at an individual gold medal for Canada. What has been a banner weekend. They will not have an A finals on the men's side in the thousand. So it all rests now on Dona Blay one more time. Nine laps and a clean start. Danai Blay leading things off. The three Koreans next in line. Shifting positions. And now it's Velzebor from the Netherlands out to the front. So Blay now it settles in between two of the three Korean skaters breaking up the big pack. And now Bly will cut inside so we men. And now looks to take down Vilsborg and Will out of this corner. Inside five laps. So we men. Says not so fast. Lee so Young trying to make a move up from fourth to third. So we men with Bly trailing and now here comes Park Ji-yoon. So they pushed by the three Koreans. Full assault. So in the lead. Two laps to go. Blyde battling. A little stumble. Fighting for the lead. One of the Korean skaters is down. Final lap. So we men. A bit in the clear now of Blyde. Park Ji-yoon in third. And here is So we men to the line. Gold for the 21-year-old from Korea. Race will be under review. Velzebor and Lee Soyon went down with a couple of laps to go. So they will check that out on a possible penalty being assessed here in the A final. And a potential penalty on Korea against the Dutch skater of Elzebor. It's so we in for the moment. A modest celebration along the ice with our coaching staff and teammates. So there's Velzebor out front. So we in in the 18 helmet. There's Bly, did well to maintain her composure there. Connected a bit with So, but no issue around that corner. The fall had already taken place at that stage. And again, we're taking a look at a potential penalty infraction on Korea, but evidently that has now been cleared. And there will not be one, at least on that initial yellow box. And So we men. Bronze in the thousand last week in Montreal. And so we men. The young Olympian from Korea will celebrate a gold medal in the thousand. Large contingent of Korean fans here in Montreal on the official results. Gold to So, Bly is up for the silver and Park ji on the bronze. The yeah, ice getting prepped now for the medal ceremony. So we men, 21 years old, Olympic silver medalist, part of Korea's 3,000 meter relay squad in Beijing. But as far as the World Cup goes, this is a first for her. First individual gold medal. Couple of silvers in the thousand back in the 2019-2020 World Cup season. So congratulations as she picks up her first individual World Cup gold medal. For the women's 1,000 meter at the ISU World Cup Short Track Montreal 2023. 
Les médailles seront présentées par The Medals Will Be Presented by the Assistant Referee, M. Alain Jeanne. En troisième position et gagnante de la médaille de bronze, in third place, and winner of the bronze medal from the Republic of Korea, Park Jion. Second place and winner of the silver medal. En deuxième position, gagnante de la médaille d'argent du Canada, Danae Blair. Position gagnant de la médaille d'or in first place and winner of the gold medal from the Republic of Korea, Chao Yimin. Applaudissements encore une fois pour nos médaillés de médaillistes. Quelques instants, on aura le dernier bloc de finale sur les distances individuelles. 1000 mètres, messieurs, finale B d'abord, finale A ensuite. Aucun Canadien ne s'est qualifié pour ce bloc de finale. Two more races on the individual side to wrap things up here at World Cup Montreal. We'll begin with the B final for the men's 1000 meter. Three competitors here, and then to the A final. Got a headline by a couple of big names Lu Xiaowang, Wang Dai Hun. Jens Van Schwoot will be in the field of five for the A championship here in a moment. Start list for the B final. Yang Sun Wu from Korea. Peter Yazapati from Hungary. And Lucas Beckenhausen. Man, oh man, he, is, he has been impressive this week at the end of races. Pipped Lou a couple of times and almost got into the A final. Starting position number one from the Republic of Korea, the Republic of Korea, Chang Sun Woo. There's Chang Sun Woo. Position number two, the position number two, the Republic of Korea. Sang Woo out of the repage here to the B final. There is Lucas Beckenhauser, 22 years of age. His dad, a speed skating coach. From Hungary, the Hungary, Yasapati Peter. And there's Peter Yasapati. Yasapati from Hungary. So those are the three in the B final. Go to the 
you go back to Speckenhauser's semifinal race. I mean, it looked like it was a foregone conclusion that Wang and Lu Shaolin were going to move on. In the final half lap of that race, Speckenhauser came from absolutely the other side of the galaxy and came within a blade tip of stealing the second position of the A final. We've seen him do that a couple of other times this week and last week. So anytime he is on the ice, he can't give up on, on any race if you think you're in the lead or you think you're in a qualifying position. Not if he's in your field. Speckenhauser in the blue kit, the back of the three. Coming up on five laps to go. Yazapati in front, Speckenhauser sweeps around. Giving Jang an inside opportunity to pass them both. Jang Sun Wu with three laps to go. Specking a Hauser and then Yazapati. Guaranteed, Jang won't slow things down toward the finish. He has seen what Speckenhauser has brought in final laps of races. Jang in the lead. Here's Speckenhauser again. Looks for room on the inside. Not there this time. And it's going to be Jang winning the B final. You can see he was aware. The long strides and the late race strategy from Speckenhauser. Yang Sun Wu takes down the B final. No reviews. Now we get ready for the A final of men's thousand. And just looking back over the World Cup results over the last almost full calendar year. There's the photo finish for second place. Speckenhauser ekes it out over Yazapati. Korea on the men's side and on the women's side. They've had a very, very good World Cup session here in Montreal last week and this week. Three individual golds last week. One so far with Kim Gun Woo in the 1500 we just saw a moment ago. They will have Lee Jong Min and Wang Dai Hoon here in the A final of this thousand. But if Korea does not win gold, that means only one, again, take this with a grain of salt, only one individual gold medal for Korea here in World Cup two. If you go all the way back to Salt Lake City last year in the second World Cup stop, where Korea had as few as one individual gold medal. They had three in Almaty. They had two in Almaty the following week. They had three in Dresden and picked up two in the final World Cup stop in Dordrecht before they went out of the World Championships and claimed two of the three. They won three last week. So far, one gold. Again, Kim Gun Woo a couple moments ago. Wang Dae Hoon, silver in the 15 yesterday. Park Ji Wan, silver a moment ago in the 15. Kim Gun Woo, a bronze yesterday in the first run in the 15. Otherwise, Canada has claimed the other two golds individually this weekend. But Canada has no racer here in this A final. So here are the final five in the A final of the 1,000. Jens Van Trouts, who over his career does have three individual World Cup gold medals. Won the 1500 in Salt Lake last year, the 1000 in Almaty, and the 500 in Salt Lake City. Here's Liu Xiaoang, the Olympic champion. Xiaoang has not had a World Cup medal yet 
representing China in an individual race. Great opportunity for him here. And there's Wang Daihun. Two-time world champ, Olympic champion in the 1500. Li Zhongmin. And Felix Pigeon. So a real opportunity for Pigeon. This is a, a distance that is very suitable to his training. Pigeon from Canada now representing Poland, adds depth to their relays. Much more of a distance skater. So Pigeon now finds himself in the A final. So that's the field. Xiaowang, second position. Van Twoutz will be inside. Wang Dae Hoon, helmet 125 right there. Starts in the third at slots. A final, men's 1000. So Liu Xiaowang goes to the front. Wang Pijon, one, two, three. Couple laps into this nine lap race. Should be really interesting strategy here. Some big names at the front. Liu guarding against Wang. Lee sitting third. We've seen that third position hold real good value when the top two go at it, creating some space. And now it is Pigeon up to third. And Lou so far in control. Inside four laps. Here's the first attempt by Wong. Cuts to the outside on Lou. Little contact. Wong swings wider. And there's the inside try by Pigeon. And he takes out Lou with him. Leaves Wang Daehoon in the clear. Van Trout now second, Lee third, as Pigeon tried to make the inside move and took down Liu Xiaowang with him. That will be reviewed, there's the bell, and it's Van Trout on the inside pass, Wang Daehoon, the back straight. Jens Van Trout around the corner, and he is your gold medalist. Jens Van Trout, wanting some noise. Winning gold in the thousand. The chaos with Pigeon and Lou created the opportunity for Van Trout. And the Dutch have an individual gold here this weekend in Montreal. So Jens Van Trout, born in the Netherlands, moved to Canada for about 10 years, then moved back to the kingdom. And he has a 1,000 meter gold medal in Montreal. Well, race shaped up about exactly as we thought with Lou and Wang going at it. And then Pigeon saw a little opportunity on the inside, bumped off with Lou Xiaowang and they both went down and that was it for those two. And then there was a late race pass from Van Trout, got around the Olympic champ. And Jens Van Schwout, gold for the Netherlands in a thousand. And they are still taking a review at that attempted pass by Pigeon on Lu Xiaowang. So that won't have any impact on the results at the top of the podium. So one more time, Alan Gresheim, chief referee on the ice, headset on. There's Liu Xiaowang, he was set up well. And again, he, it looked like maybe 
Lou was just very concerned with with Wong over the course of that race. I don't know if he knew how close Pigeon was or when Pigeon was going to make a move. Wong got shifted a little bit wider and Xiaoying was kind of looking that way and then all of a sudden he looks and suddenly there's Pigeon in front of him to his left and it was perhaps a reckless pass attempt there by Pigeon. So they both went sailing into the padding out of that first corner. And they will award not only a penalty, but a yellow card to Felix Pejon on that pass. So Liu Xiaowang will finish fourth. And as I said, well, maybe not necessarily a reckless pass attempt. Evidently, that was the determination by the officials here. We'll take a look one more time from a couple of different angles. Pejon, middle of the screen in the red and white, dives in. And dangerous behavior on that passing attempt by Pigeon at that speed in that corner. And taking down Lu Xiaowang. So Pigeon draws the yellow. But Jens Van Twouts from the Netherlands, ready to receive his 1,000 meter gold. position a gagnant de la médaille d'argent in second place and winner of the silver medal from the Republic of Korea Hang Deon Position a gagnant de la médaille d'or in first place and winner of the gold medal from the Netherlands, Jans van Bout. So there are the medalists for the men's 1000 here in Montreal. World Cup stop number two, Jens Van Trouts from the Netherlands wins gold. And the two Koreans, Wong and Lee, silver and bronze. So that is it for the individual events this weekend in Montreal. They will have one more resurfacing of the ice, and then we'll get ready for just the A finals of the women's 3000 relay, and then wrap it up with the men's 5000 relay. Scheduled restart in about 18 minutes for the women's A final, the 3000 relay. We'll bring that to you. So stay tuned. More coverage of the ISU Short Track World Cup Montreal continues in just about 18 minutes' time.
pourront défendre leur médaille d'or acquise la semaine dernière, tant au relais féminin 3000 mètres que relais masculin 5000 mètres. Donc, restez avec nous de retour à 16h55. Racing, re racing resumes at 4.55 p.m. First with the women 3000 meter relay final A and then the last race of the weekend. Il y en a deux, on l'a pas. Un chat qui va à la pharmacie, je ne sais pas. Bonjour, je vous ai dit sirop pour le matin. Oh, ok. Je veux dire sirop pour le matin. <rire> Et la dernière, le nom, la moindre. Pourquoi fait-il du frais dans un stade de soccer après une game? Pourquoi fait-il du frais dans un stade de soccer après une game? Je ne sais pas. Parce que les femmes sont partout. On fait les dames de votre frère! Wow! Oh, quel livre!
unites the global skating community around learning via a dynamic e-learning platform. Join us if you're a skater, coach, official, or involved in skating. From small bike skating courses to courses from leading skating professionals from around the world, there's something for everyone. Want to learn more on rules and regulations, or want to improve your techniques and training methods? We've got you covered. Whether you're at home, Join us today to keep learning and take your skills to the next level.
Back to Montreal, the Maurice Richard Arena for the ultimate crescendo of this World Cup doubleheader weekend. We'll begin things with a 3,000 meter relay on the women's side and wrap things up with the 5,000 relay for the men. Pat Rakeen is back with you and hopefully you've enjoyed our expanded coverage of ISU Short Track World Cup over the last couple of weeks. That will continue over the course of most of all the weekends in short track and long track when that season kicks in here shortly. There's the World Cup standings coming into this 3,000 relay. Canada by virtue of a win last week. Got the 100 points. Team USA silver, the Netherlands earned the bronze. And we will see all three of those teams in this A final. This is how they got here from the quarters, through the semis, and into the A final. The U.S. connected with Canada in the semifinal, got through. And when you look at any kind of lineup adjustments from the semis here to the finals, Team USA stays static with the four skaters, Eunice Lee, Julie Latai, Christian Santos, Griswold, Corey Stoddard. Canada will make a couple of changes according to the lineup card that I have seen. Ricky Doak and Courtney Sereau are in. Steens and Gagnon are out for Canada. So those two will join Brunel and Bly for Canada. So there is the official lineup for Canada. The world number one team a year ago won two golds in the World Cup season. And a World Championships bronze for the Canadians back in March. So meanwhile, for the U.S., not a lot of options as far as Steven Goff goes to adjust his lineup, so sticks with the same four. Top end speed for Santos, Griswold, and Stoddard, Julie Latai, and Eunice Lee. So those are the four for the United States. Silver last week. Overall, ranked number 10 in the world last year, but a much improved start, and they're in another A final here today. Now in the third position, the Olympic silver medal team from Korea. Park Ji-Wan is the change to their lineup in helmet 85, so we min. Was part of the quartet and she will stay in as well. Those are the four now for South Korea. Park Ji-Wan right there in 85. Shim suk is in there as well. And the reigning world champion, Dutch squad. Bronze last week, Olympic champions as well. The Belzebor sisters, Van Kirkhoff and Poutsma. The expected quartet for the Dutch. So those are the four. There is the start list. And the 3,000 meter A final is away and then halted as quickly as it begins. A little stumble off the blocks by Shim Suk Hee of Korea. It's a little delay before we get things rolling. It was Park Ji Wan for Korea. The United States opening there with Stoddard. Brunel for Canada. Poutsma for the Dutch. Check of the blade. Corey Stoddard. There's Shim Sukib. Drilling on that left boots. Park Ji Wan. K 
Canada, Korea, and Dutch. Three teams in this A final. They combined to win all six World Cup relays last year. Two apiece. Two for Canada, two for Korea, two for the Dutch. Dutch also claimed the European Championships gold medal. Korea won the four continents. That will be next week. In Laval, Canada. Should have coverage of that Saturday and Sunday. Talking to Stephen Goff, head coach of the U.S., a couple of days ago, and he said because of a, I guess, a, less of a volume of entrance, evidently there's not going to be any qualifying on Friday for the four count. It's just straight into Saturday and Sunday. Check your lo local listings, as they say, as we get ready for the restart. And through the first quarter with no issues, and the race is on. So it's Brunel, Poutsma, Jim Zuki and Corey Stoddard, the four are on the ice, and there's the first exchange, Dunne Blay, with Alexandra Velzebor out there for the Dutch, Santos Griswold for the United States, and that's Kim Gilly as well. Now it's Ricky Doak as the Canadians continue to take the early lead. Twenty-seven lap A final. There's Soro with Michelle Velzebor out there. So we men for Korea. And now back to the leadoff legs. Which means Brunel. Which means Stoddard at the back end for the United States. US silver to Canada last week. So now on this exchange, these will be the skaters that will bring it home. So you have Kim Gilly out there for Canada. Santos Griswold for the United States. Play for Canada, there's the exchange. And Korea looking to take the lead away from Canada for the first time, and they will. Inside 18 laps, quick exchange on both sides of the ice. It is still Korea, Velzebor out there along with Soro. Canada right now third, the U.S. still fourth. A little swerving by Poutsman, just in front of Brunel, almost led to a collision. Jim Sukhi making the exchange, Kim Gilly, Bill Zibor and Bly, and there's Santos Griswold in the back. The United States is yet to really make a move. Across the line, 13 laps to go. Harden Chiawan against Van Kirkhoff. Canada third, the U.S. fourth. No real action yet. Now Canada with Soro, a quick little tight inside move from third and all the way to first, past both the Netherlands and Korea. And the crowd goes nuts. Ten laps left. Canada in front for the first time. The Dutch have fallen to fourth. The United States now third. The exchange with eight laps to go. Canada still in front. Dene Bly. Big weekend for Bly on the podium twice individually. Korea second. Space now to the Netherlands as the U.S. has fallen back. It is Korea and Canada. The Dutch are getting right back in this race. So big exchange issue on the U.S. Very costly and likely a spot on the podium as well. A couple of reviews will take place. Korea, Canada, and the Dutch. Coming up on four laps to go. And down goes Soro. Did they make the exchange? Did Korea make the touch? Confusion on the ice right now. They're not sure who the legal skaters are. There's an exchange by the Dutch. Mad scramble and a lot of confusion on this relay. And there's Alexander of Elzebor for the Netherlands. We'll have three reviews, a couple on potential penalties, and maybe one 
on an exchange. There's the bell. And here comes around the final corner. That's Shim Shilke. And the race continues for them. Shim and Stoddard around the corner. Here's the Dutch toward the line. And reaching for the line, it looks like Korea got there. Shim Shilke. But absolute confusion on this relay. It looked like one, maybe two teams had an issue on an exchange. So this will take a doctorate degree for the officials, the timekeepers, and the video officials to sort out. Because at one stage or another in this race, it looked like three, if not all four teams fell down. Whether it was on penalties with contacts or on exchanges. So we heard the bell and then we still saw teams go around the ice a couple of times. So hard to track who was on the lead lap and who wasn't. And that's now all the mechanics to calculate through. And this will take, I would imagine, a fair amount of replay uh, review to make sure that they have everybody on the right lap. And they also will need to check on a couple of penalties and some exchange issues also. So there was the initial battle where Courtney Sorot overtook the lead from both the Dutch and Korea. And there we see the United States sliding out hard. That was Santos Griswold going out. And here are the issues on the exchange right there involving Canada, involving the Dutch. Van Kirkhoff, I'm not sure, touched Velzebor as they try to make the change. Then here, that was supposed to be another exchange as well for both Canada and Korea. Didn't look like either did. So that's what led to all of a sudden Shim and Stoddard, who were not supposed to anchor the finish of this race, they had to as a result of some skaters going down. I mean, it should have been Santos Griswold for the U.S. and Kim Gilly for the Koreans to finish it up. But again, with the issues on the exchanges and people falling down, I mean, it's, it's madness, it's mayhem, and it's a lot of impromptu then. Stephen Goff, head coach for the United States, talking things over with his squad. Canada trying to figure out, hey, did we make a legal exchange or not? Korea really in the same boat. I doubt this will be a short a short delay here. As I'm getting word now from Montreal, they're taking a look at a possible penalty involving Team Canada on two separate occasions in their race, both with Canada possibly infringing on the Dutch team. And the second yellow box now I'm seeing has been cleared. So two other reviews. One involves Canada and the Dutch from earlier in the race. And then I'm getting an indication on a review of Team USA. Now, if you remember back yesterday with Team USA, there was an issue on a potentiality of too many skaters on the ice for Team USA. That was looked at following the end of the race. It was cleared, which is what allowed the United States to reach this A final. And there's the Korean squad. And now we're taking a look and the possibility of yet another penalty review involving the Canadian team again. There's Alan Grefsheim. And I believe that as I'm watching the information flow in from Montreal from our liaison official, it looks like they're taking a look at Canada on an exchange issue as well. So it was a touch made right there going to Courtney Sorrell. Then you're worried about, you know, the, the number of laps <laughs> raced as well. Is there an issue there with Korea perhaps on that exchange? So there's, I mean, there's a lot at play right there. I mean, there should have been an exchange right there for Team Korea as well. Didn't see any contact there, but that skater evidently remained on the ice. 
So, well, there's a lot of sort through here. Well, this is the, the crazy romance of short track. Nothing is ever straightforward in this sport. And just when you think you have your skaters lined up, we'll do the exchanges. Santos Griswold and the others will bring it home on the anchor leg. Some major catastrophe happens in the middle of the race, and all of a sudden, you're kind of going on instincts. Hey, if Santos Griswold is down, can't make an exchange to her, everybody else has to step up, and you have to know kind of how that changes the, the recycling of the events. And there's a look at that review on that exchange involving a couple of teams. And then if you're the, the lap counter, that facilitator, you need to make sure that hey, as skaters go down, how many laps have they skated, who's on the lead lap, who's not, who's a couple behind. Again, at watching the races earlier this morning, there appeared to be a race where the lap counter was off by a couple of laps in one of the repechage, I believe it was a, a 1,000 repechage, which led to all of the skaters skating a couple more laps than they should have in that nine lap race. So there's a lot of confusion across the board for a lot of people potentially in this sport with certain events. And this one got messy. And there you see the United States team talking with the Canadians. I mean, I don't think anybody's really sure how this is going to play out for the athletes. It's, it's just the, the lovely part of their sport. It happens. We raised it. We'll see how it's judged. <laughs> Corey Stoddard right there in the middle trying to explain with the Korean squad. Bly, Sarone, there's Santos Griswold leading against the padding with that left elbow, trying to explain. Eunice Lee in the foreground, Julie Latai. Dutch pretty quiet right now. Did they win it? I mean, that's the question. Did Korea win it? That's the question. And a couple of these video review boxes evidently have now been cleared. There still is a possibility of a penalty on Canada. The United States now have been cleared. Canada on an exchange evidently has been cleared. It looks like shared responsibility involving Canada and the Dutch earlier in the race, but they have not yet cleared Canada in a potential incident with the Dutch. And again, this is all real time from our official liaison. We don't get details on exactly where and what they're looking at, but it's some shorthand information being sent our way so we can convey that to you so we're not all sitting in the dark. But evidently the potential penalty with Canada on the Dutch earlier in the race has been shared responsibility, so no penalty there. The possible infraction on Canada on an exchange evidently has been cleared. The exchange issue with the United States has been cleared. But a potential Canadian penalty involving the Dutch has not yet been cleared, if it will at all. And yeah, it's a good time to play some uh, some Queen, a song that lasts about nine minutes. <laughs> Little Bohemian Rhapsody to distract the fans and the athletes. Maybe we'll have a resolution by the time this song ends the background. It's classic. You might be able to air the entire movie before this is resolved. Yeah, fans are singing along. Why not? She was caught lip syncing. There's Kim Gilly. Gold in the 15 yesterday, silver in the 1500 today, always smiling. Lovely. Lovely competitor. No final decision yet from the officials. Meanwhile, the men are waiting to bring their own madness onto the ice for the 5,000 relay here in a couple of moments. 
They will have the medal ceremony in between. It's just a matter of who gets them. Alexander Bell is aboard, kind of leaning back in the blonde hair. So here's the announcement. Penalty charged against Canada. That lifts Korea to the top of the podium officially. The Netherlands win silver in the United States bronze. So last week's gold medalist Canada earned the penalty and Korea to the top of the podium. Lots to review. And this was the first incident that was declared shared responsibility involving the Dutch and Canada. So no penalty charge there. Now if we move on chronologically, this should be where the penalty was, and it is. This is the penalty on Team Canada. Right there, taking down the Korean skater. And that is really kind of what led to all the chaos as far as exchanges go. So the penalty charge against Team Canada there. And Kim Gillian, one of the first times we haven't seen her smile, breaking down a little bit because the penalty occurred on her watch. So Korea to the top of the podium. So Kim Gillian overcome by happy tears. Probably a big sense of relief also. And the Dutch silver, bronze to the U.S. And Canada penalized. Julie Latile, loving the music. And loving another medal ceremony to the U.S. So now to the ice and the medal ceremony for the women's 3,000 relay. Presented by the referees Al Grefsheim and Alain Jeanne. In troisième position, a gagnant de la médaille de bronze. In third place, and winner of the bronze medal, Team USA. Eunice Lee, Julie Latte, Tristan Santos Griswold, and Corinne Stobart. Team USA. En deuxième position, et gagnante de la médaille d'argent. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, Team Netherlands. Selma Pautzma, Jana van Kerkhoff, Michel Belzebourg, and Chandra Belzebourg. Position et gagnante de la médaille d'or in first place and winner of the gold medal, Republic of Korea. Kim Gilly, Lee Soyun, Park Jihon, Park Jihon, Sao Yimin, and Shim Suk
Team Republic of Korea. Bonne mêlée de pour nos médaillés de medalists. So there's the podium for the women's 3000 relay. Korea, the Netherlands, the United States, gold, silver, bronze. Canada penalized. And if that's your introduction to short track, watching that 3000 relay, that's what short track is, track is all about. Not every lace is as uh, messy and dirty as that one. Well, that's kind of the epitome of what short track represents. So the women's side of this World Cup stop second weekend in Montreal comes to a close. Korea, top of the podium for the third time as either individuals or as teams. So we men won the 1,000. Kim Gilly, the 1,500 yesterday. Now the women's team takes down the relay. Solid weekend for Stephen Goff's United States women. Bronze here in the relay. Santos Griswold. Silver in yesterday's 1500, bronze today in the 15. And the Dutch, Poutsma, silver in the 500 yesterday. And back on the podium with a silver in the 3000 relay, silver also in the 2000 mixed relay yesterday. So the updated standings within the 3000 relay, Korea now tied for the top with Canada. Netherlands and the U.S. tied for third, and then China. Those are the top five. So one race remains here in World Cup Montreal. We've been here for a couple of weeks. And the defending World Cup champ from last week here on home ice. Canada will be in the A final again. The only team that reached the podium last week that will not be in this A final is Japan. Kazakhstan, one of the four vine, along with China, Korea, and Canada. So there are the World Cup standings on the men's side for the relay. Just one event in, Canada, Korea, Japan. One, two, three last week. Canada, the reigning Olympic gold medalist. Time now to China, the Kazakhstan, got a yellow card in the semifinals last week. Now they find themselves back in an A final. And three of the four lineups have made adjustments from the semifinals to this A final. There's a look at the Korean side. Hong Dae Hoon has now been inserted. Kim Gun Woo, Park Ji Won, So Yi Ra. So Jang and Lee are now not starting in this A final. That's no surprise. Great depth in this Korean program. So now they give a little extra rest and bring in Wong, bring in Kim Gun Woo and Park. So here's Team Canada. Pascal Dion and Maxime Laoun will sit this one out. Rousset gets the starting nod as part of the group. Angelo, Pierre Gillet, and Dubois. The four for Canada. Position number three. And now for Team China. And there are the Liu brothers. Shaolin and Xiao Ang. Soon Long is in there. And in Xiao Jun. That will be a tough quartet to crack in this race. So Li and Song will not race in this A final for China. Meanwhile, Kazakhstan does not really have any other options. Same four that have been racing over the course of the first couple of weekends. 
remain intact. Nikisha, Shalakhanov, Alec Metov, Zaksabayev. So those are the four. There's Galik Metov in the white helmet. Three teammates in the black. So we race for gold in the 5,000 meter men's relay last events here in Montreal. Hope you've enjoyed all of our coverage. Great thanks to the ISU, to all the officials, to the head coaches, the athletes, and you, the fans, watching wherever you are around the world. Patrick Keenis. Voice is held up a little bit better than what I thought it was over the course of the day. I'll go on a vocal sabbatical here in about 10 minutes. There's Aksibaya for Kazakhstan. Roussel from Canada. There's Ian Zhaojun for China. So ye Rob. So ready to get things going. 5,000 meter relay underway. 45 laps. The world number one coming out of last year, Canada. The world champion, though, back in March was China. Liu Xiaoang opening things up here for China. There's the first push. Park Ji Wan on the second leg. That's key, which means he's targeted to be the guy to finish this race for Korea. But we all know what plans are versus reality, right? We witnessed that firsthand in the last race. Liu Shaolin on the second leg for China. Korea, Kazakhstan, China, Canada. So you're on the ice for Korea. Olympic gold medalist from Beijing, Canada, the silver medalist, Korea. That's how they finished last week in the opener of this World Cup, Canada, Korea, and Japan. Wang Dae-hoon is out there with Galdik Metzoff. He was a leadoff skater for Korea. Now it's Park Ji-won. Shalakata for Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan last year, just one men's relay podium. It was a silver right here in Montreal in the first World Cup event of the season. And now they are here in an A final. Five laps to go, still Korea on top. No big movements yet. So Yira delivers the exchange to Wang Dahun. And back to the leadoff skaters, which includes Pierre Gillet. Canada contents in fourth. So these would be the prospective anchors at the end of the race. Park ji Wan out there for Korea. Canada would have Dan Janu. But again, we'll see if that holds up with all the exchanges we have remaining in this race. Pace picking up a hair. Canada still easing forward in fourth place. Nikisha on the ice for Kazakhstan. About 17 laps deep. Wang out there against Galik Metzoff. Liu Xiaowang for China. Pierre Gillet for Canada. And now the first attempt here by China, Liu Shaolin. So Shaolin passes Park Ji Wan, China in front. 24 laps remain. Liu 
No attempts yet at the back of the pack from Canada. Stephen Dubois is kind of hanging out. Sue Long makes the exchange for China. Kazakhstan trying to burst forward. Galik Metov cut off by Liu Xiaoang. Korea now third. Brother to brother exchange. Liu Xiaolin racing from the front for China. Kazakhstan right in the middle of China and Korea. Lin Zhao out there for China. Pace picking in laps are now below nine seconds a turn. 17 laps to go. Soon long. Kazakhstan still out in front of Korea, sitting second. Dubois trying to stay in touch with the front pack. 15 laps left. It's China and Kazakhstan, small gap to Korea in third. And now Shaolin on the ice, Shabakonov right on him. Direct race so far, the only thing that's changed is really the pace of the laps. Now we're in the mid to low eights. In Zhaozhou, now the race is on. Legs are churning, lap time is dropping, and Korea aiming for the lead and trying to get around China. A lot of connection. Racers stay on their skates, but China maintains the lead. Soon Long hanging in. They will take a review right there with nine laps to go. China begins to spread out the lead on the Koreans. A second review will take place. It is China and Korea, Liu Xiaolin. Trying to hold off Park Jiwon. These two are basically side by side. Here's the exchange. It's still China. Lin Xiaojun still in front. Coming up on five laps to go. So Lin darting ahead, cutting the corner, making the exchange, and expanding the lead is China. A little bit of an issue for Korea on that last exchange. Four laps left. And China is now flying away from the Koreans. Three laps to go. China in the clear. Canada now up in a second place. And here's the last exchange. China in front. There's Angelo working against the Koreans. Here's the bell. China in the lead and in the clear. Half lap to go. And China is going to win gold in the 5,000 relay. Canada for second, Korea for third. Liu Shaolin brings it home. So the Shaolin, Shoang, Liu brothers. That will be, if it holds, their first 5,000 relay win in the red, gold, and black of the China colors. And how about that reaction with the coaching staff? The Liu brothers courted back to China following their coach. We talked about what it would mean for the relay on both the mixed side and the men's side with the Liu brothers. And they look to be on the top of the World Cup podium for the first time representing China. Unofficial results. Three boxes indicating a potential penalty review. The first one has now been cleared involving Korea and China. And we're still awaiting details on what exactly they're looking for for the remaining two. And how about that focus in the eyes of Liu Shaolin? And right here is where Sun Long, we've seen him make some excellent passes there. Some contact involving Sun Long against the Korean skater. I think that was So Yi Rob. Second review box now has been cleared. 
There is one remaining that involves Korea, but we don't have any specific details on what exactly they're taking a look at. And there's Liu Shaolin across the line, point to their sideline, and a big exhort of championship gold from the Liu brothers. Lin Xiaojun, Soon Long, the quartet for China. Sportsmanship, the handshakes, as World Cup 2 here in Montreal has now come to a close. The racing is done. And just awaiting the official results here in the 5,000 relay. Team Canada, Sebastian Cross, head coach. Well, the Chinese relay team on the men's side last year finished with a world ranking of three. They won one goal, but they won the world championships without the Lou brothers back in March. And you want to talk now about elite depth in terms of relay competition on the men's side with China right in the middle of that conversation with Korea, with Canada. Because last year, Korea won two golds, Canada won two golds. China won the four continent gold, China won in Dresden. Canada actually won three of the six within the World Cup season. But the tilting of power within the relays is now no longer only residing with Canada and Korea because China's right in the mix now. And they know it. <laughs> and they knew it once the 12 month period expired for the Liu brothers to join Team China. And we'll see if there is a penalty charged. And there will be a penalty due to a, an inactive skater on the ice. Charged against Korea, I believe. That evidently caused some obstruction with racers on the ice. Oh, there's a stunner. So gold belongs to China, but that is going to put Kazakhstan on the podium. So here are the official results. Korea draws the penalty. And again, overhearing the public address announcer make the official announcement, there evidently was a, a non-competing Korean skater on the ice in the middle of that race, which caused some obstruction for other skaters. So the penalty drawn by Korea, let's take a look and see when that happened. So China wins gold. Canada silver, Kazakhstan is up for the bronze. And now let's take a look at the inactive skater on the track for Korea. Evidently right there trying to get in position for the exchange. And yeah, you saw the two Chinese skaters as they were coming in to make their own exchange. Yeah, they were kind of hemmed in and that skater from Korea kind of got in the way. Didn't impact the final results. China went on to win it, but nevertheless, the penalty assessed to the Koreans. So they will lose world ranking points. And a podium finish. And how about Kazakhstan? They're on the podium for the first time since the first World Cup of last year. Up for a bronze. Let's go to the ice and the medal ceremony. The medals will be presented by the referees Al Grefsheim and Alain Jeanne. In the position, the winner of the medal of bronze in third place. And winner of the bronze medal. Team Kazakhstan, Le Kazakhstan. 
Denis Nikisha, Mersaid Saksibayev, Anil Galiakmetov, and Yerge Bolin Shabuhanov. Team Kazakhstan. In second place and winner of the silver medal, in deuxième position, et gagnant de la médaille d'argent, le Canada. <applaudissements> Félix Roussel, Jordan Virgil, Maxime Laoun, Stephen Dubois, Pascal Dion et William Nanjenou. In first place and winner of the gold medal, Team People's Republic of China. Li Wenlong, Lin Zhaojun, Liu Xiaowang, Liu Xiaolin, Song Jiawa, and Sun Long. China. Dernière main d'applaudissement pour nos médaillés, les médaillistes. So one last pose for the medal winners in the 5,000 meter men's relay, China. Top of the podium for the first time with the Lou brothers. Silver to Canada and Kazakhstan, its first men's relay podium finish at bronze. First medal for the Kazakhs since the opening World Cup event last year. Well, that is going to do it for our coverage over these first two weeks from Montreal of the ISU Short Track World Cup. There's the updated standings. For the 5,000 relay, Canada, China, Korea, Japan, the top four. Kazakhstan now number seven after that bronze a couple of moments ago. Well, the World Cup season will take a brief little pause until December 8th through the 10th in Beijing when the Lou brothers will race on the ice of China as the World Cup heads overseas to Asia. Beijing, December 8th through the 10th. The following week in Seoul, South Korea, December 15th through the 17th. But coming up next week, the four continents from Laval, Canada, where we will see a lot of these same skaters in Laval next Saturday and Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Check your local listings. Follow the ISU Short Track uh, Skating YouTube page for all the details there and all of the action. So for everyone with the ISU, and our entire crew, Patrick Keenis, saying so long from World Cup Montreal. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and good night.